feed me. I mean, you probably could, but I don't necessarily think they're going to get the correct one. You're probably not going to get. I'm hungry and need sustenance. They're going to get something like, I don't know what this pervert wants, but he needs to leave right now. They can wrap your truck in puck skins. I think that. Hello that's and welcome morbid. to Strange Conversations. Where we kill pugs, apparently. The weekly <laughs> gaming and tech news show on the Strange Gaming Network. I'm one of your hosts, Brent Metcalf, alongside, on my left, Dylan. And Sinai. that was really delayed. Why would you do that? I had a flow. I'm when actually doing well today. Left, and I had to think about it. Because <laughs> he's to my Which left. Which one's the other? And I'm all right. Mark Glover. We're here to talk with you about our topics of the show, but first... The important... The important... Apparently the important... Um, the We can just kind of go in like a random, no frills order, but the first thing I want to talk about, because one of us has acquired a new piece of technology, and while people waited in line for this new piece of technology, uh, the company Huawei, or as I like to call them, Huawei... Um, <laughs> They decided to give out uh, some power banks every time to make you some s- sofas. Every time you say that, it annoys crap out of me. That's good. <laughs> Huawei. <coughs> Huawei, decided Huawei. Huawei decided they were going Huawei. to actually troll a bunch of iPhone buyers and walk through the lines of people who were purchasing iPhones and waiting to uh, go into the stores because you know, there were lines, you know, it was probably about like 50 to 100 people long, at least. And they were handing out it's power banks. It's not worth it, people. <coughs> they were, it's just a phone. They were yeah. handing out power banks in like little that paper or cardboard envelopes that yeah. says, Here's a power bank. You'll need it. <laughs> See, what's, what's funny to me is as much of a troll as that is, to me it's almost a testament to like how dedicated people that like really like Apple are. Yeah. Because it's like they're going to wait there for three days, whereas I, being an intelligent human, a scholar as you may, oh uh, I walk... Gentleman and a scholar. Yep, I walk in to Best Buy. I use a website called Now in Stock Alert, and I walk in to Best Buy, and they're like, no, they don't have the color I wanted. I was like, Cool. Walked into Verizon, we also had it, and they were like, yeah, uh, give me your card. Here you go. Here's your phone. Well, that was easy. No line. Wow. So you so saved no yourself Huawei, three days worth of I didn't get a power bank, though, so I feel like I kind of lost, honestly. I mean, <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, probably. Probably. Yeah. It's not like you did anything useful in those three days anyways. Exactly. I didn't go to work. <laughs> what bothers me more is they come out like a Friday. Yeah. So people have to take off from like a Tuesday. Good Lord. Who, what are you doing? You are not only losing money... Because you're buying this device, you're losing money because you're not working. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, a, I mean, I, I know people who take PTO for this. They they they're just deciding, <clears throat> you know, I'm gonna camp out for two days because I want to be third in line at my local Apple store. More power and then they get you. there and they're like 25th. Yeah, and then somebody like me just walks in three hours after they pick theirs up yeah. and just gets one. This yeah. just shows how un like I, how little passion I have for anything in life because you could tell me PS5 is like you're gonna wait. Three days. See, Brent, 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 that's because you're dead inside. That's different. My thing I mean, though, though is wrong. because it's exclusiveness, right? Like, so like PS5, sure, they're gonna make more PS5s. Yeah. Now this was like, like uh, your big, your <clears throat> biggest music preference is probably Linkin Park, favorite band. Yeah, it's never happening again though. Right, but I'm saying like, <laughs> yeah, if it would have been like for one of their concerts and it was like, say, like the biggest concert in Atlanta or whatever, and it's like a one-time deal. And there's I, a limited number. I just don't know, like, because even because th- I've seen them, like, yeah, yeah. that's First my big time. thing is I. I have I have experienced all of these things. I have a console that I own at home that is going to be less powerful than the new one, but that's fine. I still have games I haven't played. <laughs> yeah. Like I've seen music people like they're do things. Yeah, like just none of this I is. I know sports doesn't resonate at all. So there's no, no that, that was terrible. <laughs> like if you were to tell me like you're never going to leave the country again, you get one more shot. You got to wait three days to get in there. Then yeah, that'd be the one. Hmm. Would you have waited in line for X amount of time for those weird little solar glasses? I don't know what solar glasses. Solar glasses. Want to watch the solar eclipse at EB? Oh, oh. no, because I didn't even buy any. I borrowed somebody else's. When I got, I'll say I borrowed. I, I borrowed the, yours. Actually, I was the biggest slacker in the world. People were like, <laughs> "The eclipse is going on. You should come downstairs." And I was like, "Well, I, mean, I guess you're I right." Like, I it, it was. I mean, everybody came outside. It was kind of cool. But the, honestly, the more entertaining thing for me was watching like the little like half uh, half leaves half and all the yeah, yeah. like the little reflections off the leaves. Yeah, they're soulless. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> like Huawei, I said, well, no nope, passion. Oh, anyway, Huawei, well done. I I, I applauded actually. Yeah. There's a nice troll. I, I think they lose out in the end because I, I do believe you're right. It just shows that these people are very passionate and they're like, hey, we got a free power bank in it. But funny mm-hmm. nonetheless. Yeah. yeah. They also had some couches and other stuff. Uh, the next little bit of news that we had is that AI is now deciphering 
images, languages, life. Right. As you would call it. So, uh, okay, first off, it's always been... I don't know, anyway. It finds a way. It's, it's, <laughs> AI has always been able to decipher uh, objects into images and things like that. The difference is that they specifically did this with spoken language to better equate AI with a human child who is learning about the world. The bop and the binkies. So, the, the, I mean, the way that a child learns is, I mean, it doesn't understand written language. It can't read anything. So the idea is that it has to understand what it's looking at based on what it hears. Okay. So the idea is they were taking images of things and, like, for training it would say, like, give it a section of words to say, um, you know, like, uh, the one they showed specifically was an airplane, like, on a road or on a taxiway is what they said, you know, like, with trees behind it and a mountain in the background and a sunset behind, you know, like, uh, fading off in the distance or whatever. And then they gave it several hundred, that like, 400,000 images or something like that, and it actually got it, like, 80 or 90-some percent accuracy after it. After it went through all four hundred thousand images, it was actually relatively interesting. Interesting to see, you know, that like it was able to s- sort of articulate it past that point. It had no preconditioned knowledge of language or anything beyond that point, just how to learn it. So I'm not scared yet because I could just mis teach it. Like, yeah, that's that water is land, and, and it's going to go right it. into it and electrocute itself. I'm fine. And unplug <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that that human being right there is friend. Correct, like friend. The uh, it's terrifying to me because like one like. Kids are already deceptively smart. Like, I've never, like, been around, like, an infant for, a, you know, it's, like, conception to, like, you know, being a non-infant. But, like, my uncle's <laughs> kid is now progressing through those stages. I think it's, it'll be two this year. It'll be two in January. Also known as a non-infant. <laughs> non-infant, yeah. Um, so also known as he or she, not it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lots of parents at this table, can't you tell? <laughs> but uh, he is, like, the smartest little human ever. It's just ridiculously impressive. I think he's speaking now, but last time I saw him over the summer in, like, uh, July, he wasn't yet. Yeah. But, like, whenever he needed drink, he would just look at you and go. And then whenever he needed food, he would just. <laughs> and then wow. whenever he was done with whatever, he would just. And it sounds like just a like, demanding little shit if you ask me. He was. <laughs> He was, but it was more. Okay, well, I'm honestly, this, this, this one's my favorite because it's like, no, 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 take it away. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's prepping. He's prepping to be, you know, like, Gertrude. Oh, I'm done oh, with this, please. He's, he's prepping to be a rich a hole already. But to me, it's just really impressive because it's just like, I'm pretty certain when I was like one, I just would throw poop at you. That was my play. That was as smart as I got. No. I'm just like looking at him, like, dude, you're really smart. I'll attribute that to other <laughs> factors there, bud. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really impressive to me how like smart little humans are, and now if we're gonna teach robots to make them even smarter, I'm even more scared. Yeah, and the best part is they can't throw poop at you. They could. They I mean, could, they, they could. could all band together and throw one massive sea of poop. It could be like a it's scene from a medieval movie, just with arrows instead of arrows. Source the poop from somewhere poop themselves. They're in the supply of poop. So reach in their pants. Robots? Oh no, the humans. <laughs> oh, they just command little babies. <laughs> You and I are on the same page. Uh, I was like, I didn't realize that we were also like, having robots what? just <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> that was, was kind like, of the point. What are you talking about? The yeah. robots are going to be like pulling crap out of their pants and throwing it. Speaking of pulling crap out of their <clears throat> pants, Linux but right now. <laughs> <laughs> Linux is trying to pull all the crap out of their pants. <laughs> That's got to be one of the best segues ever. Because they're uh, fun. All right. Oh. So, um, <clears throat> interruptions. Um, Linus Torvalds, uh, for those of you who know what the Linux operating system is, um, for those Not of Linus you who don't, tech tips. Right. the uh, Linux operating system essentially powers every single Android device, um, and about, I want to say, 75 to 80% of the world's servers, like I- everything, pretty much. Nothing important. Of no, no, not at all. Uh, Linus Torvalds is uh, the recognized founder of Linux and, and wrote the original Linux operating system or the, or the original Linux kernel. Um, I think it's 25 years ago now. Um, stepped down this week. Uh, part of the problem is, is that he himself generated this destructive culture um, in an open forum and an open mailing list that they have was openly calling people dumbasses and was calling them yeah. all kinds of other nasty names and things like that <clears throat> that was being very destructive and and he very much himself uh would come off very anti-feminist so the community of female developers and female executives even involved with the linux foundation has reduced drastically uh to the point that every one of them is like i don't i just don't want to be here for this this is this is regardless of women even like a lot of developers who just (coughs) submit submit code because this is open source 
like anybody can can fork the repository and submit their own code anyway to better and improve this. Actually, better yet, there are executives that are paid by big companies like Intel, AMD, um, Microsoft, even you know, like to pitch into this because they use this operating system. Hell, a non-infant could do it. Yep, I guess. But uh, they, uh, the the problem is, is that he's. He set up a really bad culture from the beginning, and everybody wanted to step away from this. Like even to the point that guys who were getting paid by their companies to do this said, "No, no, no, I'm I'm not doing this. I'm not dealing with him." <laughs> so <clears throat> somebody finally got up on him and said, uh, "Hey, look, you probably need to step down." And he decided, "Look, I'm going to step away and I'm going to reevaluate myself and how I interact with other people because he's, I mean, you know, like most really popular, uh, you know, software developers or or well known software developers, they're kind of shut ins. They're not really." you know, social people. He he has created an environment that falls into what I like to call the French chef syndrome, where there's a stereotype for French chefs in which they would scream and yell at the top of their lungs at everyone who did anything wrong to form perfection. And Basically. people who could get stay in the heat and could stay in the kitchen, they would be cast into this perfect chef. Hmm. And so it's it's very common to see people who are masters of their craft create this environment because they believe that they know what's right. Exactly. It, it stems from, and this is in no way excusing his behavior because it's wrong with like, as we've progressed as a society, we realize that's a terrible way to teach people. It's not fun. Yep. Um, but in, in his eyes, it comes from a, a, a caringness for the thing that he has created. Yeah. It is unfortunate. It's taken him this long to realize it. And, and hopefully, the people who are deterred by him come back. I mean, because Linux is a big deal. Like, oh, yeah. it, uh, when you're talking about an uh, open source operating system that is as popular as it is, like you're talking about, large corporations pay people to fork it and utilize it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't keep myself on that one. Um, doesn't matter. I'm the only one who thought it was funny. To, do, to clarify, too, Lin Linux is a kernel. It's the, yeah. the kernel that interfaces with the hardware. But, yeah, the, the fact that this Sorry. is... <clears throat> the fact that this is... Basically, the most widely used piece of code in existence. Yeah, it is troubling that the, it's troubling that you know it being open source, it like, and his attitude towards it has stifled this much innovation. Like, how many people could we have actually thrown at this and really improved this uh, this chunk of software, which actually is relatively small by comparison to everything else out there, to better refine it, better improve it, and everything over time. Yeah, I agree. You know, but if he had just been open to everybody else's ideas here, you chose to laugh at fork, but not kernel. <laughs> That was a perfect setup. I think I think fork actually is a little bit funnier to me. Yeah, because uh, you can fork it. <laughs> Go fork yourself. Because I also like to spoon, too. Oh. I worry about both of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else you can go fork? You can go fork the idea of buying an NES controller without your weird little Switch Online services. Is that what you can do, Brent? Yeah. God, that's beyond, beyond here. Okay. Um, so Another logical decision. There's, there's a couple of things we got to tackle here. For one... If you don't know, uh, the Switch Online is now available. It's $20 a year. Uh, you get 20 free NES games that you can play on your Switch. Uh, some of them are online co-op. Some of them are local co-op. Um, they also announced these nice, really cool classic NES controllers that you can slide onto your Switch, and it charges that way. You can't play it that way. But you can slide them off, and then you can just hand it to a buddy. You're playing NES games in, with the control scheme that they were intended for. It's amazing. You cannot buy them without having an online subscription because you have to got, buy them through Nintendo's specific store. You have to have your account tied to the online service in order for you to purchase them. What? It is the dumbest thing on the planet. I'm like, you created these things for people to play. Like, you, you can trick them offline. in. Yeah. Be bundle clear. You, Th that's, yeah, you don't have offline. to be online yeah. to play them and use the controllers, but you have to have the online service to purchase them. There's so much wrong here. It, what gets me is that you can't buy the NES games alone. You have to have an online to get those NES games. So they've already tricked you. Like, just give it to everyone to buy the controllers. And when they're like, oh, I need an online. Oh, well, here's another $20. Like, mind-boggling. It's one of those things where, like, as I was reading this, I was like, this isn't from The Onion. <laughs> 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 this is real. This Wait, is... So do, do you have to maintain that online subscription to be able to continue to play those NES games? Yes, 100%. It, and, and here's the but kicker. You to, but you have to pay for those games too, don't you? So no. Those are, oh, okay, are, those okay, are yeah. lumped into your, your subscription. Okay, that, that makes sense. You can't pay for them, more sense. which is dumb to me. But you can't yeah. pay for them, which is dumb. I agree. Because yeah. I would buy a handful of them. 
For like, uh, if you could spend like fifty bucks and get like the fifty biggest NES games, yeah. or even twenty yeah. of the biggest NES games, people totally buy that. One hundred percent. They they yeah. did. They spent sixty dollars yeah. on the NES Mini Classic, whatever you want to call it. Um, there was some. It's really interesting, infuriating to me because Nintendo, and I'm going on a slight tangent here, but it's re- around the news topic. Uh, they've set up this online service that they're not going to remind you you need to re up. What? So when your subscription let lapses, it go, let it go. get over yourself. <laughs> when the subscription lapses, you lose all of your cloud save data that you used in the service. So the they whole point of it. They don't just keep it? They don't keep it. It's as soon as your subscription lapses, it's, like, it's gone. Have you ever looked at a Nest before? It's the same setup as Nest, which is completely ignorant. Yeah. Nest, if someone, if they were keep always record, okay? So if we were to have a Nest camera outside and I were to not pay it for a day, and then that day, someone breaks into the house. They record it, okay? But if I have to pay to access it, but when I pay to access it, it restarts the camera's feed, so it deletes all the footage there that they've saved. Yeah. So they have the I footage have... of the burglar, <clears throat> but then when I pay to get the footage, it deletes it. See, at that point, you just you just hand them the uh, subpoena for it. And at that point, you yeah. Just, oh, you yeah. Did, you don't even point, pay for anything. No, no, no. <clears throat> at that point, because you know that information is there, yeah. you're just going to call them and say, hey, by the way, you might want to hold this footage. You're going to have a subpoena for it's it. It's just so but dumb. It is dumb. And I, I have suffered from this before because they are, their earlier iteration of this online style of system is the Pokemon Bank, which is run between them and the Pokemon Company. And the Pokemon Bank operates the same way. So I had three games worth of Pokemon on my online storage my subscription laughs and i came back on i was like i have none of it it is all gone i am angry right now let it go. so let it go. we this can is, we can is, what's bothersome to me most about this is like it's not like playstation right now is not the most popular company in terms of like you know great decisions yeah when it comes um, to user base yes However, PlayStation Plus, you know, you could have how many games you got on PlayStation Plus? Hundred. I have at least three hundred games on it because so, I get so three hundred. Wow. If for you all three platforms, if you don't pay for it for a month, and then you pay for it the next month, they're also there, right? Yeah, you yeah. have six months. Look at that. You have a six months uh, grace period whenever your your thing goes. I I think Microsoft's three. Like, but each company has a grace period That's where weird. you're like, oh, huh. If my I have my PlayStation and stuff set to auto renew, and yeah. I start getting emails the month beforehand, yeah, to auto pay. That's like, weird. I don't hey, know. we're gonna charge you in thirty days for this. Oh yeah, yeah, and it's like cool. Thanks, thanks, man. Yeah, and exactly. Get out of my account. Cool. <laughs> That's the whole reason why my email is tied to this, is so that way you can tell me these things. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's not like you don't have a means of communicating with your audience. It's not like I've entered my cell phone number and my email address <laughs> and a secondary just, and my home address so you could mail me something. Come on. They just they're baffling company. <clears throat> yeah. And we can just roll on down yes. the baffling train. I let it, leave it open just for you. Yeah. yeah so uh, you good. Uh, in Japan, uh, Ubisoft is going to be releasing Assassin's Creed Odyssey on the Switch. Odysseus is one would say. Correct. <laughs> but it will not be native to the Switch. You will have to stream it off gaming servers. So you will have uh, um, just a little... Good Lord, my brain just stuttered. Um, you, a little bit. N- Nintendo's trying to beat Xbox to market here, basically. No, yeah, it's. essentially. But it's a, a client on your Switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Brain could not remember that word. I didn't know where you were going with that. Uh, that's fine. You have a client on your Switch, and that client will basically operate as like, hey, you can turn the game on and connect to the servers and play. And it is a weird system. They did this with Resident Evil 7. Um, with it, we, we can hope that if if they've been, you know, going uh, if going down this awful route with uh, online, that, you know, this has been where all the R&D has gone in the meantime. What's weird to me is the part that you haven't mentioned yet, which I'm is getting the, there. Uh, the, the good part. Yeah, you pay... For the amount of time you play the game, every day you pay a specific amount of yen, or you can buy an annual subscription for it. You can't pay for like a monthly unlimited. No, or... and you pay for the amount of time that you pay on, you play on it, and when you're done paying, you no longer have access to the game. What's amazing to me is that w- let's assume that this year bundle is you get two months free. Okay, right? You 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 twelve months in a year, you get two months free by paying for the year. Yeah. Are you going to play Assassin's Creed every day for a year? <laughs> What's worse is, like you said, though, you lose the file when you stop paying. Yes. So you have to keep paying Correct. until you beat the game. Correct. And here's the worst part is that the cost for that annual fee or whatever is equated to 75 or $80. So it's more expensive than if you were to buy the game outright for another system. No, no, yep. no. It's, it's more expensive for me to just buy an Xbox Live subscription and say, you know what, whatever. I, I could just yeah. throw money at this instead and play anything. Yep. 
Well, yeah. I know. What? It's baffling. What's even <clears throat> crazier to me is that Sony announced today, this is a slight tangent, but I'm going to add it, today that, you know, the Vita production will be ending in Japan in 2019. So I just want a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I was, I was hopeful I could just even do like the, the blow thing or whatever, blow it out. Yeah. They own the market space. Like that, there are no other portables now. Vita has been dying a slow death, but in Japan it's been fairly successful. They announced a cheese, you guess, like a handful of new games for it. It's dead. So the Switch is the only real portable, and they're just like, hey, let's just do this. It's a portable. It's not a console. It is 100% <laughs> a portable. Nintendo, <laughs> you can kid yourself all you want. It is 100% a portable. I believe it was last week that John was trying to convince me that it is not considered a portable, that it is a console. So according to Nintendo. <laughs> I don't disagree with what they say. Yeah. I'm saying in reality. <laughs> it is 100% a portable. So it's just, it, they're making some strange moves. It'll They will never do that streaming thing here. Strange. Uh here in the United States, because our infrastructure is not great, their online infrastructure in Japan is spectacular compared to us. I don't know how large their country is, but I feel like that's much easier because they have a smaller country. Um, it's well, a, it's we can look at population size for like their biggest convention, which happened this past week, and they had a record setting of 267,000. So it's like nothing. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people, but if you yeah, look at like Gamescom or you look at even I'm saying, E3, they got like 100 and some million people, but if they're, I'm ass- I don't know how big the country of japan is i'm gonna assume it's like the size of california is my guess i could totally be wrong but if you put like a hundred that's a third of the u.s population in california that's a lot california i really have no idea perfect how how large it is i was saying if if you just had to make really good internet for the state of california that would be much easier than like topeka kansas because like 14 people live in Topeka, Kansas. I mean, I guess they're. I guess the difference is that population is so much more dense there, so it's easier to run the infrastructure. Although to be fair, dense infrastructure like that's kind of difficult. Well, oh, okay, I, I take that back. It, it's it's more difficult than our ISPs are willing. Our ISPs here are willing to you know invest in. In America, 874 <clears throat> people per square mile. What is the U.S. at? Uh, while I do admire that statistic, because I do like statistics, that statistic. Uh, it's only 126 million people. Right. No, I'm saying, what is the U.S.? I'm working on it, man. I, I got you said it was fat eight, fingers. 800 and some people per square mile. 874. 874. That seems like a lot. That is U- a lot. The U.S. Oh is 1205. 1205? Yeah. Per square mile? Per square mile. 1205. Wait, hold on. I lied. <laughs> oh, I was about to say, there's no way. That's like <laughs> India level. 1205 would make, hold on, I'm looking here. 1205 people per square mile? Yeah. Or 1,205 square miles per people. I don't like this website. Uh, n- neither I don't one of those sounds right. Like, we're gonna, well, We can keep rolling while we're, we're, we're going to keep rolling on. Um, Otherwise, we're just going to say, ooh, let's look up stuff on Wikipedia. Actually, no, let's you, watch, let's need, watch we, three dudes stare at their phones. Is we need to roll on into PlayStation Now. Yes. Uh, so I'll get back to this. Um, I can research it. Play, PlayStation Now uh, is n- now going to start allowing... At, at, Downloads for games. So you no longer have to stream the game directly from the server or onto your PS4. You can download it to your system. You have to connect to the internet once every five days, I think, is their limitation, and the, or else you can't play the game, which is fine. Um, however, you can only download PS2 games and some PS4 games, not all of them. What's your answer? Patrick, uh, it is basically the size of California. It is okay. It is probably longer than California. However, it is skinnier, so it's probably square mileage about the same as California. California. That's a third of our population, so they got a third of our population in a California. Um, But the PlayStation Now um, piece, the issue for me is that why is there still a gaping hole here? Yeah, no. So there's two big problems here. No PS3 games are available to download, which is a problem. And granted, I know why. It's the, the cell processor emulation. They, they haven't found a good way to do it, and that's why they're not, it, which is dumb. <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> um, the other big thing is pricing. Do either of you know what the pricing of PlayStation Now is? I assume no. It's too expensive. I had it. I did it for the first month it was out, I believe. I'm not a PlayStation um, guy, so no. Yeah. So they changed their pricing model since it released, oh, and it's even worse. If you are a first-time buyer, you get the first month for $10. Every month after that, $20. Yeah. You can buy a monthly subscription or an annual. That's it. I want to say in the beginning it was fourteen ninety nine a month. It was fourteen ninety nine a month. Plus they had yeah. other things where you could like rent for seven days or rent yeah. for three. Like 
but there's no middle ground here. And so the problem being is that it's a twice the price of Xbox's backwards compatibility program, their, their game live or game game pass, not games pass. Um, <laughs> they're um, not as robust. Yeah. And then you have these freaking loopholes. Like why can't, why can't this be like Amazon? Why can't I go and rent a game like a game? Just a game for however long. You, what's weird to me is you would think that, like, it does the I, don't, I haven't really looked on PlayStation Four, but on PlayStation Three on the store you could rent movies. Yeah, I, I you, assume you, you, you can, you can do, do the that. same thing on Not, Four, but you can't do it with games. Yeah, it's but like, you can't do it again. Your structure's already there. Because like when I was playing the PS Three, I was like, oh, it's like a two dollars to watch this movie. Eh, I'll watch it. Yeah, cool. You got two dollars. I would gladly pay five bucks three day rental. What or five bucks a day rental? Like there are so many little things. Like I never played my the original. Issue, my issue with the five dollar day rental is I wish it was time based. Of like yeah, yeah not twenty four hour yeah, period. I'll do but, like five bucks for like ten hours. Yeah, five dollar holla. Um, but you know I never played the original Red Dead, and the the new ones coming out. People are stoked on it. We've talked about how it's overrated stoked so like much on this. Stoked like a fire. It's going to burn through its own hype. Um, <laughs> I am or smolder out. I would love to. Have like experience just the uh, first couple hours of the first game just to kind of get an idea of why people are so excited about it. Yeah. Can't. I mean, I can, but I'm not spending $20 to do so. Yeah. It's just, it's ludicrous. You know what else that's Ooh. missing? You know what else that's missing? Uh, PlayStation, PlayStation ones. ones. Yeah. Like classics. Yeah. yeah. It's almost <laughs> like there's a reason for that. <clears throat> like they're trying to sell us something <laughs> that is, oh yeah, that's right. The PlayStation classic. Uh, why is it a hundred dollar holla? This is this uh, Sony. Come on. Sony. <laughs> like, so it comes with two controllers, which the original NES Classic did not. If you paid sixty dollars and then twenty dollars for an extra controller, however, the SNES Classic did, and it cost eighty. So this comes with two controllers. They're USB compatible, so they're no like unlike Nintendo's thing, which is like, hey, you can clip it into this one thing and that's it. BS. This is actually utilize. Uh, you can utilize it elsewhere. However, awesome. they're the original PlayStation controllers. No, no sticks. No analog sticks, Ooh. which also limits the games that can be on there. There are certain games that do not play without them, including Ape Escape, which is like one of the big games that was like, hey, we have sticks. People are like, yeah, I really like that game, and that cannot be feasible on this. They actually don't. I, when I played on PlayStation 1, I didn't know that you could get a stick controller. I didn't know up until PS2 came out, and the port was the same, so I just bought – I just – took the PS2 controller and used it on my one from time to time. So this is how I see this going is, you know, like all this comes out, PlayStation Classic, cool, you know, here's two controllers, that kind of thing. By the way, here's a DualShock Yeah, I I feel it too. But um, they're they're selling out. It is surprising how fast it's going, especially since we only know five games. Yeah. Hmm. Which would be Final Fantasy VII, Ridge Racer IV, um, Tekken III, Resident Evil, right? Resident. I don't think it was confirmed Resident Evil. Oh, I thought I did see that. I There's two you know. two others that were like kind of obscure. There, you're like, yeah. those are PlayStation One games. Yes, or are they classics? I'm not so sure. The thing that I are need they like a is GT or nothing. Like <laughs> the thing that I need is a Gran Turismo. I need the what, what is the was it Medieval Night? Medieval. Now they have that remake coming, so I think that'd be good marketing. Yeah. What is it? Is it Medieval? Medieval. Yeah. With Sir Dan Solid. One. Sir uh, Daniel Fortescue. Castlevania. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Symphony of the Night for sure. You have to have that on the original Metal Gear has to be on there. You want to? Uh, yeah, I don't know. If this could take up half the thing's memory, but you could do the the classic Legend of the Dragoon. I feel I, like that game is as infamous as it is popular. It is one hundred percent. Yeah, I definitely think Legend of Dragoon should be on there. It's Sony published. Like, there's no yeah. reason not to. Yeah. People clamor for it all the time. Yeah. And I remember I because I, I rebought it on PlayStation Three, which one it bothers me. One, I don't have PlayStation Three. That anymore. you can play PlayStation One games on your PS Three, but not your Four. Yes. Yeah, it's the dumbest thing in the world, <laughs> isn't know, it? <laughs> it's know, almost like they built the emulator only to work on the six core process cell processors in the PS Three. <laughs> but it doesn't make any sense to me because I bought it on the PlayStation Three and. You can play. You can play other PlayStation One games on the four, right? No, emulated. I thought you could. No, you can only play only whatever two. re-releases they put out there. Okay. So like Square Enix has done uh, Final Fantasy Seven and Nine. Um, they're they remade uh, Parappa the Rapper, which probably should be in this classic, but they just remade it. This is the yeah. weirdest thing about Sony is that they've actually done a good job of maintaining their legacy throughout the years. Like you said, you've bought PlayStation One games. I played the original Metal Gear Solid on my PSP which I bought using the PS3. Like, yeah. mm. I, I've, it's just bizarre that they have all these outlets. If you own 
all the devices. You could play all of the games you want. But you have to keep your devices. But you have to keep your devices. Yeah. And so now they're trying to package this up. But the biggest issue, honestly, is licensing. Spyro and Crash are owned by Activision. Are yep. they going to be on here? They just no. got re-releases. Why would they? See, I think the issue is I don't think Activision is going to play nice. Because I remember reading about the... When PlayStation All Stars was coming out, they apparently had fully modeled yeah. Crash, and like Crash was in it, and then Activision was like, "No." So the oh, difference wow. being, well, PS3 was losing in that time, and they yeah. were just like, "It's not worth it." What's weird though is like my issue with that is Activision. What do you lose? Yeah. Oh, I agree, one hundred percent. It's yeah. so no, dumb. It's in PlayStation <laughs> Three, they had no idea of a Crash remake or a Spyro remake. Yeah. Back then, they're like, "Eh, Sony sucks. Whatever." <laughs> not only that, like, how much cachet did Sony get? They're, you're selling more titles because Crash is like Crash alone would have sold at least another ten million units. I'm yeah. throwing that out there, but <laughs> that's my guess. <laughs> right, but my issue with it is just more of like. Apparently they made it, and it was just like I feel like they just went to Activision and was like, "Look, we're gonna use these moves and do these things. What do you think about it?" And they're like, "Nah, nah, get them out." Yep. <laughs> like, you're nice what? try. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So, it, it, it's a baffling mess that I cannot wait to see the end of. I thought long and hard about purchasing one myself yep. because of all of these micro consoles that have released, and we're not even in talking about the fact that Atari's released a couple. Um, there's the Genesis coming next year. Like, There's a lot of them out there now for nostalgia purposes. This is the one that hits home for me. See, I think the Genesis will probably be the one that I get just because that's the console I've played the most with my uncle. That's yeah. the one i played the most. Or the Dreamcast, which there's no way. There's no way. <laughs> they don't have enough games to put on. There's like 14 games total for the Dreamcast. No, it, it would be just like the real Dreamcast. It would have you, all 14 games? <laughs> no, no, no. You release it, and then you just allow people to play every game because everyone just torrented everything. That yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's just called downloading an emulator, yeah. but you may as well get the emulator no, for no, free. The, the issue with the Dreamcast was it was so easy to copy the yeah, games. Yeah. You just burned the disc and had to have a bootloader to start it. <laughs> There, there's a whole lot of that's amazing. amazing. Yeah, I mean, you could play Dreamcast games on the original Xbox because yeah. it bombed so badly. They just had to partner with someone. Yeah. They're like, please let. let us well, no, play the this deal game. was that you could play Dreamcast games on the original Xbox, but that's where they got the brick controller from. They took all their controller and just rebranded. That was the first Xbox controller. <laughs> it was the Dreamcast controller without the, the Duke. interface. The yeah, Duke. makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Makes sense. But the, there's speculation as to whether this thing will connect to online. Sony PR people have come back and said no. People are asking, are there going to be updates? Will it just be 20 games? They've come back and said no. They've only revealed five out of the 15. And, you 20. know. You said five out of 15. Yeah, five out of 20. Yeah, thank you. As a JRPG nerd, I can fill that up the entire thing with just Square Enix <laughs> games. Like, <laughs> it's not even funny. So we'll see where this ends up. Uh, December 3rd is when it's coming out because that was the, it's going to put it at the 25 year mark for the playstation 24 yeah. my only my only qualm wow. with it is going to be that i feel like they're gonna throw some things where sony's gonna be like yeah you remember this don't you and it's gonna be like tomba we don't care like croc like, yeah i, I oh, think croc oh, is a cool oh, game oh but no. i feel like sony's like yeah that's a classic guys it's nah. a real classic i think my favorite no. response is like the people on twitter who are like yeah that's a really good play let's all pretend that having no analog sticks was a lot of fun to play with <laughs> like <laughs> come on uh it's definitely very interesting the uh the next bit of news that i wanted to bring up is that we're celebrating the wonderful wonderful cake day of android which you both use the big old correct one oh yeah the big old one oh yeah. it's almost legal See, it's not. It's not. <laughs> Whereas Dylan likes to call it aged out. <laughs> um, but the uh, it turning ten. All of this was a joke, a very very great joke. Um, <laughs> the uh, Dylan was gonna make that joke, and I got prepped for it. <laughs> um, the uh, the first uh, Android phone was what, Mark? Uh, first Android phone was the Motorola Droid, if I do recall. Plus the HTC Flippy Floppy. The first one major release was the HTC Evo. That's it. It was the 4G LD Evo. Is that what the no. fighting tournament was named after? It was not named after the fighting tournament, unfortunately. Um, either way, it's turning 10. Uh, it's very fascinating um, because... What? There wasn't a 4G phone first. He, he's Google. No, the Evo was the first 4G phone. That's what I was thinking of. Oh, first 4G phone. Yeah, yes. yeah. That's where There's I a different HTC. HTC One, I think, was the other one. It could have been. Um, but either way, uh, Android is... Controlling the market, I believe. I believe it's like still 65% of the market or something like that. Globally? It may just be in the U.S. Though. Globally? It's controlling. It's yeah, controlling yeah it's, it's yeah. still majorities. Um, it think, impresses me the BlackBerry is still on that stat. As an OS, not as a phone. Yeah, of course. Because the new ones are Android. Um, it's just really fascinating to me how... What is it? Apple, well, uh, well, so this is the other side of the market. Since 2011, Apple's iOS market share has varied between 14 and 21%. 
the other, you know, 70 to 79 to 86%. Well, you got like Android. 5% in there. Right. Actually, Windows probably had a good, not a good market being up. I would say like 3%. 2%. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like a 3 yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's just very fascinating how Android has just continually grown and, you know, mm-hmm. it's still living its its greatest life, even though we almost never talk about it in the news because we talk about Apple a ton and, you know, Android just slips on by. It, I mean, that that's the silent majority. That's Apple branding, yeah. honestly. Uh, I agree that I prefer my Android over Apple. Mm-hmm. I understand Apple's easier, but yep. the things I get out of this is just better suited for my needs. The Pokemans. The Pokemans, yeah. I can't play <laughs> that at all on Apple phones. Didn't they come out on Apple first? Uh, I think it was like a day, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, it wasn't anything like special. I think there is a. There's a no, couple. It was the Mario when they came out, like a year. Early yeah, or yeah. it was. Yeah, it was the Mario, um, Mario Mario Run or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, <laughs> and, and then Sorry, it came the, out. And then it came out on Android. What, like three weeks later? It was like uh, two and a half months later. But no, it was. Right, a, still. But nobody really liked it, so it was fine. <laughs> All I think of is that little joke where <laughs> like Nintendo's trying to tell you something. Mario Run, Pokemon Go, <laughs> Animal Crossing, get out. <laughs> Wait, Animal Crossing, get out. No, oh, okay. <laughs> it's just, that's what the next game's going to be. Didn't they just make an Animal Crossing? It was Pocket Cap. Don't worry about it. It was a funny joke <laughs> at the time, okay? Just let it go. Why you got to ruin it? It's not Animal it? I'm sorry. Um, so in the notion of slightly the, the – there's just a couple trailers that came out last week. We had TGS. We had a, mm-hmm. lot of, a lot of hot news. A lot of games that were announced that I've never heard of in my entire life based upon animes that I've oh, also man, never so heard of in my entire there's life. So, many, so just uh, a quick, real quick. Anime Rundown. If you care about One Piece, World Seeker looks wonderful. If you care at all about Kill a Kill, the fighting game looks amazing. And the Jump Force, of course, is looking like it's going to be a stellar roster. The, uh, there was one, and it was a guy in a suit based upon school or something like that. I, I saw the trailer for it, and I was like, I don't – there's something here. And I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, but the one particularly we want to talk about is the Troy Baker as a villain. Troy Baker as a villain. Did we know this going into this? So, no. This okay. was the reveal for Troy Baker. I didn't know it, and I was like – I don't. I guess I missed that. It was the funniest thing to me. Again, is that as I told you, I watched it. It just like straight, and I was like, "Huh, that's Troy Baker." And then all these outlets were. I watched the the almost like the news roll where it was like, "Hey, there's a new Death Stranding trailer." And then 15 minutes later, Troy Baker's in the new Death Stranding trailer. <laughs> like, hell, everyone's like, "Oh, that's right, that is Troy," because there was no actual accolades given to him. Well, yeah, it was weird because like I had no idea. Um, I didn't think he was – I guess I had no idea he was a part of it or whatever. And I was watching it. was like the the title I saw like on the Twitter post or whatever was like, Death Stranding new trailer shows golden-faced monster or something like that. Hmm. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Play. And I was like, that's Troy Baker. <laughs> He's a bad guy. Yeah. He's an awesome bad guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was a minute and 29 seconds, I think, of footage, and it's like – the most gameplay footage we've seen from this, kind of, maybe. And it's maybe a cutscene. Yeah, yeah. Know. But, um, yeah, I am super excited. And I'm not surprised. Kojima, similar to uh, Christopher Nolan, likes to work with people over and over again. Yep. Uh, so seeing that he's bringing Troy over from uh, Phantom Pain, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some other people that were working on Metal Gears that come over. Um, the only question, honestly, and I think a lot of fans are wondering, is if David Hayter, who is the original voice actor for Metal Gear Solid, he says a hater. No, he's actually really cool. Um, he whether or not he'll be doing the cast because there was this tumultuous issue with uh, Kiefer Sutherland taking over for voice acting that he was not a fan of and was not like given mm-hmm. the proper warning, whatever right. that looks like. So Setup or whatever. But yeah, I definitely found it very interesting because to me, one, we know nothing about this still, basically. Correct. Um, but and it's just random, you know? It's just like they keep releasing things, and it's like you would think the more trailers we see, the more answers we get, but it's just more questions. There are some trailers or some answers here. There's a wonderful group of the internet, uh, specifically this YouTube channel called Python Selkin, in which they break down um, all of the Death Stranding footage we've seen and compare it with the PT footage that was given to us from pt the playable teaser and how this may very well be the silent hill game that kojima wanted to make but couldn't and so it's now like rebranded and kind of shifted they do i'm not kidding hour and a half long breakdowns of like bringing these things together and that sounds terrifying. amazing wow. that sounds terrifying hmm. uh on the other bit of trailer news as well speaking of amazing we got a captain marvel oh, miss marvel yes. looks good captain marvel is it captain marvel it's or captain marvel, marvel. It's captain marvel also has given us the new era of memes, you know, of, you know, a lady punching an old woman. That's, Correct. It's great. Crazy. Correct. What Perfect. else do you want? I mean, that's all I ever want in my life. <laughs> Suave, uh, Nicolas Cage. Did you really say Nicolas Cage? Suave. 
Ave. <laughs> There's two, not there, Nicolas there's, Cage. There's two oh descriptions should never <laughs> go together. It's Suave and I Nicolas Cage should never be like in the same of. sentence. We'll let you get back to it. So the trailer looked great. Um, <laughs> I did. think the funniest thing to me is the internet reaction to Brie Larson not having facial features. They're like, she just never smiles. I'm like, well, she's like a space captain thing. She's fighting people. She doesn't need to smile. She's fine. It's, it's, it's going to be a, a Twilight all over. Yeah, again. it'll be good. It'll be good. No, don't look it up. We'll give you to the end of the show. You can come back to it. <laughs> My head hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I just got phasered like Men in Black 2 style. I'd be I'll furious if I were you. Shit. Don't. Nick Fury. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> wow. I nearly spat my water on you too when you looked at me. Because <laughs> you were just like, what? The gears were turning hard. <laughs> <laughs> they were. I just It was pure <laughs> internal blue screen. And I was like, as soon as I said it, I was like, I didn't feel right. <laughs> I didn't all, feel all, right. And all Brent's over here thinking is what he's got to steal the Declaration of Independence. Now. What oh, do yeah, you absolutely. do if Nicholas Cage is in this film now? <laughs> <laughs> what if he's the bad guy? That'd be great. That'd be crazy. <laughs> he's trying to steal the, the Declaration of Independence from whatever star force they're working with. Like It's not the U.S. Declaration. It's that planet's Declaration of Independence. Yeah, definitely find it. It's very weird. I'm hoping that it is more along the lines of Ragnarok because I think that was very well publicly yeah. received and kind of like, you know, lighthearted, you know. I would love for it to be dark as crap, but I don't think we're going to get that. I think it's going to have to be considering where Infinity War left everyone. Yeah. Like going back, I recently we watched the film with the fiancé, and um, that film is great, really well put together, is definitely like leaves you with a, like, man, what's... You know those... I, the end of that movie to me was like, there's no way it's over yet. Oh yeah! Oh, those are credits. No, it's <laughs> over. So I think they need like a little, like a little gelato in between. You know, it's I like gelato. palate cleanser. Um, I didn't know gelato was a palate cleanser. Yeah, and I just thought it was delicious. Or sorbet. They'll use it like fancy little restaurants. Like, mm. what is sorbet? Sorbet is like that. Sounds like bay is sore. Correct. The only other thing I've seen is like a palate cleanser. Is like that fried banana stuff they give you. Yeah, plantains. Yeah, 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 I thought it was like you could use like cherries and or strawberries. You don't want to use strong flavors. You want to use neutral flavors. Mm. Um. I saw, you know, the the car salesman meme? Where yeah. It's like the taps for the hood of car. Yeah. Yeah. I saw one of those where it was Thanos, and it was just like, it's got a dustpan. It's like, we'll fit half the Avengers in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I do think it's going to be very exciting. I'm I'm very yeah. hyped for the movie. Uh, Set in the 90s, we got a Nick Fury with two eyes. And a blockbuster. Beautiful. And a blockbuster. That was my favorite part of the entire yeah. trailer, I think. She that's crash where lands. That's where we're going to see Nicolas Cage. There you go. Bill and Chef, look, I oh, told Con you. Con Air Nick you. Cage. So he's got that long flowing hair Con and the Air? white wife beard. You got to watch this movie with me one day. Okay. It's so dumb. It's so good. I've never watched Dumb and Dumber either. Put the bunny back in the box. If you've seen Con Air, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. That's weird. Um, there was a bunch of other trailers, but those were the... Uh, yeah, those were the kind of the big the, ones. The, those were the big bigs. Um, the last little bit of news that we had is um, Walmart, actually, this was really fascinating to me, has started testing this training do majigger. And they're giving people Oculus Go's to do training now. And oh, it's for like cool. customer service stuff. It's for sales training, which I don't how know. Do you, how do you do human interaction over VR? Like, I guess you're just in a space and like you can see them, you know? Could you pick a more mundane job to train like <laughs> the coolest technology we have? I definitely think it's interesting because like, I don't know. Yeah. You know I, those like stupid like security things you have to take like, oh, like. Insert company you work for his name here is like, oh, we're updating our compliance. Take this 25 questionnaire yeah. thing. I hope it's like something like that. But instead, it's like, what do you do in this what situation? It's got like Greg like lighting the printer on fire, and you're like, call a manager. <laughs> <laughs> call a manager. Option B for 600, Dan. Yeah, I've. I know this has like a, been a big selling point of VR and other like AR experiences Education. where you can use this for education. And I do think there's a use there. I don't think Walmart's there. I don't <laughs> think Walmart's there. And I don't think the general population, like a majority of the jobs you're going into, aren't going to need this. Like my immediate thought was like, well, if you have stuff to manipulate, it's like plumbing or cooking. Like, but you're not going to want to do that surgery. virtually. <laughs> no, surgeon no. simulator. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, but like, no kidding, surgeon simulator. Not you know, like this ridiculous thing that's meant for you to screw everything up. But all of that, like, you're you're better <clears throat> off with real hands-on experience, not emulated. Yeah, like that that works well when you're talking about underwater diving like all right well here's let's let's test this out before we go in the water tank and then test this out mm -hmm. before we go into the actual thing yeah my thing is with customer service i guess the only advantage i could see here is like you know maybe like 
when you go, like I say, if I'm going up in a simulation to talk to Mark about, like, how I'm going to approach him about this scenario, right? You could at least control the narrative, but, like, that's going to be a very linear training. It's going to be the exact same as clicking the text on the screen. Yeah. yeah. And you're just going to see a picture of Mark versus, oh, I can go to the left. Well, right. see, the way that I could actually see this going is more in line of just sort of watching a video or an over-the-shoulder kind of like a shadowing, basically, without actually having to shadow somebody with a real customer. Because then you can actually give them the experiences that you that you that they can commonly expect versus coming across. Well, the only problem is, I guess, then you can't handle some of the outlier I, stuff. I was about to say, I, not <laughs> but, only that, I only think that works. I don't think it works really well because of the fact that the shadowing process works from pressure being with someone else. Like, right. It, and I don't think you exert that same level of pressure when it's through a, a screen. It's just like talking to someone on a support line for whatever, the case, you know, your, your cell phone's a dumb thing because you're on your phone. Your PlayStation. Like, that individual is not going to have the same level of customer down? care as if you were to go into a store and talk to someone because yeah. you're looking face-to-face. I also think it would be very interesting because we know most companies are cheap. Yeah. You say you're in, like, the heart of Boston and then the little VR thing you're watching is, like, the most Texan dude ever. You're <laughs> like, well, this isn't right. <laughs> Son, there's something wrong with my cell phone. I'm going to get me one of them there, uh, Ethan's. <laughs> what? Everything um, about that hurts. Yeah, you got to get in the 64 GBs, though. Specifically the 64 of the GBs. Oh, I've got bad stories of working at Walmart for a summer. That's it. <laughs> it's insane, man. Uh, this has been the important sh- That was weird. I don't that want was... to do that again. I felt wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I feel right, Brian. I feel don't. right. I feel right, Brent. All right. So I think we have an actual flow to our topics, which is not as rare as I like to think it is, but we definitely just jump all over the place. Let's start with Marky Mark. And if you're Marky Mark, we must be the Funky Bunch. As you always are. Um, now, mine was kind of interesting. I was reading through uh, the, you know some of the news this week, and uh, I, I came across an article that said that the majority of people interviewed, uh, they, I think it was somewhere between 50 and 60 percent, um, are okay with having a robot boss, sure. having somebody who has no humanity to them, has no a- any kind of human element, but is merely just a managing piece of software to say, this is what you're supposed to do, or and make, I guess, like uh, I guess the way they described it, even just to the survey, without actually having something to present, of course, is, you know, it being able to make some of the higher level decisions in an autonomous fashion. Mm-hmm without requiring a human boss to be there. And the majority of them said, yes, I'm okay with that because they actually don't like their bosses as it is. Did you ask the French chefs that Brent has told us about earlier? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel but, like they're going to choose that all day. Yeah, but I, I, I think that was kind of the main point was that most people who work, you know, like I guess for larger companies because that's where the majority of America works basically, but they were okay with that because the idea is that their boss is awful and they don't want to work for somebody like that. How do you guys feel about working for a robot boss? I think we need to quit giving participation trophies. I feel like this spawns a lot of this issue. I mean, that... that I don't know why uh, I went back I'll, to the Texas. I'll say yes to that. that. I mean... I do think that a lot of people are, <coughs> I think, unnecessarily intimidated by bosses and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then there are definitely some bosses who are on a power high. And, you know, they want to be like, oh, I'm a baller, so I'm going to be your little French chef, dude. I'm going to yell at you until you're right or fire you or whatever I want to do. So I definitely think there is that piece of the market. I think the majority, though, is definitely, I feel like it's a good bit of people maybe, I don't want to say being lazy, but also like you would want something more binary. Like if it's a robot, it's like, hey, I need you to get this paper done. You get the paper done or whatever. It's like, cool, we got it done, whatever. Whereas like uh, an actual boss, like, hey, I need you to get this paper done. And then Brett hands you the paper. And I'm like, bro, this sucks. Yeah. Can you do it again? Whereas like. Brent could be like, oh, wow, that hurt my feelings. Or Brent could be like, that doesn't. And I feel like there's a lot of people who are taking that as that hurt my feelings, and a robot would just tell me to do it again. Yeah. Maybe he's coming off as an a-hole. Well, but by the same token, there's a lot of other human element pieces that come in there, too. I feel like a lot of bosses come in with a power trip, like, oh, this is my my office. I'm going to run it how I want. Nobody's perfect. Nobody else is me, that kind of thing. You know, And, I mean, I've been in a few places where that's happened. It's not a good environment to be in. And definitely, the, like, other environments, too, where I feel like people are disconnected. My fear with having that is that you'd end up with the ultimate disconnect of this is no longer a human being I can negotiate yeah. with. Yeah. It's a very binary thing of saying <laughs> yes paper, and no. You. Like, and that was that's exactly where my point was was going to be. Is I I agree. I I don't agree with your comment about laziness. I agree with your comment about people being unnecessarily flustered by bosses. Bosses are people. I mean, it it sounds. I guess calloused a little bit, but 
it's all about manipulating the people around you. Like if yeah. you like, I work with a lot of people who are fine people. They're not my friends. I'm not going to hang out with them. Yep. So if I want to get around specific behaviors or something, I find ways to manipulate the environment or the situation so that that doesn't happen. You do the same with a boss. Like it's not rocket science and it does take time. And if the situation doesn't benefit, I mean, it does like there are other opportunities, right? There are some fields in which this is, gets a little tricky, but overall, like there's always something better. A machine is not going to give you that. Like you may hate your boss you have now. That machine that you're going to despise because that one day that you like feel like and you could probably negotiate with your boss like, hey, you know, kid's been up all night, not feeling great. I just need a day. There's a good chance. There's at least a chance. At least a chance that you <laughs> the could. Robots turn up every yeah, the, the, the <laughs> robots can be like, it's no, it's you either take a PCO day or oh, I'm sorry, you're out. So you're you're here, like. The grit grass is always greener. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you I keep telling yourself that. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> One, w- during your monologue there, I had an epiphany, and that is that I think that everyone on this podcast has worked with you. Yes. Yeah. And then they became your friend, and now they don't work with you. So, yes, John and I were friends before him. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. What I'm learning here is if you become friends with Brent and you work with him. You lose your job. You might lose your job. Yeah. You never know. I mean, maybe it's because I'm manipulating it, bosses. It's like you decide, you know, I'm, Shh, I'm out. I got you fired. I'm out. Um, one thing that I do want to point out, which I don't know why, this is just my thought, I guess, because I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'm the power tripping future boss of the world. But I can uh, see that. when I was thinking about this, I was like, why do you want the robot to be your boss? Because then you can't take your boss's job or <laughs> like that is legit yeah. a no, job that yeah. you can no longer get because it's not there. You have captured your entire field exactly. in your office for no reason. Yep. No, it, it's. It is really strange to hear, and I think – hey, I'd be curious about, like, how the survey was done because a lot of off-the-cuff – Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, hey, it's totally take a robot over my boss. My boss sucks. But well, but, but see, I, the, my <laughs> thing is this is how people would make that decision. If Like, even if a company put out a poll to their employees and said, how would you feel about a robot boss, especially if they have bad management practices oh, as man, it is, yeah. this is really they would be like, how would you feel about this? They'd be like, yeah, that's cool. And they'd be like, all right, cool, fire that guy. And immediately they're like, yeah, they fired that guy. And then a robot comes in and you're like, I would no, like to imagine. Now I don't feel inspired to do nothing. I would like, imagine it would be like one of those. Uh, I don't know why we're saying this Texas accent, but um, I don't feel I would like, inspired to do nothing. I would like to imagine it's like those robots from CES, where it's basically like the Roomba with a stick and a screen. <laughs> it just <laughs> zips around the office. To you. <laughs> I really want this robot now to have this personality. Where it's like, it's I was Texan. born and raised in Texas on a they cattle a hat farm. On. Hat on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know how to handle and rustle and them. All it has is like one one like arm mechanism on the inside to tip the hat. Yep. Over <laughs> I do think that um like what you guys are talking about. There's this really fascinating concept about death packs, which is like a it's a really weird topic. If you ever want to learn more about it, there's a podcast called Radio Labs, and the specific episode is called Playing God. Um, but death packs are a thing that Sarah Palin, a uh, political person here in the U.S., um, brought up for a while. And it was basically that, like, you can't give the masses the ability to answer questions that they're incapable of answering correctly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's basically like, hey, if we gave you this question to the whole U.S., you would answer in a way that is worse than if we didn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we can't give you this question. And I feel like that's the same thing of, like, if you ask everyone in the company, like, hey, do you want to have robot bosses? They might all be like, yes, when someone at the top should be like, guys, that's a bad idea. We're not serious, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, well, no, no, no. Specifically, those managers that have been treating their employees be like, oh, no, no, no. That's yeah. a bad idea. <laughs> I, I do also think that's a good point is that your position, like, is a huge – because position can come from a lot of things. Not always, but economic status, education, yeah. like – all of those things matter entirely here. But also, like, if your boss is supposed to be doing something specific, whether it be manual labor or specific jobs they're not doing, and you're looking at this, once again, this grass is greener, like, hey, this scenario, they're totally going to do it. Like, yes, they will, but you lose out on all these benefits, and they eventually become the Terminator or HAL 9000. That's what I really hope is that it's just like – the second one is. You've seen it 2001 a Space Odyssey. You've seen it before where it's just the robot with the big red glowing like lens and it's just like black behind it. I'll find a picture. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. That sounds about. like the only a thing creepy I, version of the portal guy. The only thing I can think of is like I guess whenever they did um comparison of Hal and Nine Thousand Watson. Yep, there like you the go. Little, yes, like the little one hundred percent. Like the little you know, like Watson has like the, the little orb thing or whatever on the screen, the little round thing that Watson's the IBM robot, right? Yes. 
Not the IBM supercomputer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because right. hmm. yeah, uh, uh, um, Futurama did a, a yeah. review for that too. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, it, to me, it's just much more devaluing of like, if I had a robot boss, then I couldn't be that position. So therefore, I'd be like, oh well, this is not my career. I need well, to figure I, out how to get up higher than this. Well, I mean, the only way to do that, though, like the nice thing I guess though about having an automated boss like that is the manager stays basically what that robot manager basically stays in one position and would be the one to automatic uh, automate the process of putting you up for a promotion like the only problem is that means you're explicitly you're ranked a lot on better a now. list you're yeah. pitching this way better now from your performance not but. only that if we're talking about him being able to learn like a toddler from words this is gonna be really bad what i don't bringing it back into the ai yeah, topic come on we call i'm him. now uh <laughs> i'm in a position now to where that would honestly be super useful because if one person was doing way better than that the people they could be promoted where I, sometimes a boss doesn't always notice that. I, That's I, fair. I do find this really interesting because your fear of this entire scenario is not getting specific positions above you. Mine is quality of life. Like, that is 100%. Oh, I no. want to be You're able not going to gonna have a leader. You're, no. You're going to have this automated thing that says, do this. Yeah. Do this. I want do this. Because, like... See, I would... I've got... I guess my logic is, like, I, my hierarchy right now, like, I'm a business analyst. The position above me is normally a project manager. Yeah. But my actual boss is a whatever like director of business analysts is basically his position, VP, whatever his title Something, is. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but um, he's above me and like he like obviously manages us and whatnot. But it doesn't directly impact us on projects. Um, he basically is you know what are you doing? You're doing good. Yeah. Yada. yada. Um, so in the scenario, sorry, that was creepy. I was like, <laughs> hey, <laughs> Brent's a robot. All right. <laughs> Um, sure. But in the scenario that he was a robot, it, I, it wouldn't really change my quality of life just because, like, we interact as friends, obviously, so it would be one less person in the office to talk to. Um, but in terms of, like, interacting as, like, a career was, I feel like the robot would be like, hey, if you don't go up four projects, then you're going to get a promotion and just do this, this, and this. And I'd much rather just be like, but they're, cool, I got a checklist. The, I would say they're, compl- they're clear checkboxes. Yeah, it's very yeah. binary. So if it's like, cool, and then granted, I'm also thinking of it as a pre- person who's like you know just trying to climb the ladder as fast as possible yeah. but it's like if you just gave me a checklist of things i gotta check off then i got a really like straightforward target see that's perfect for me as a developer you know somebody who doesn't necessarily like to talk to people all that often yeah. it'd be great for me to have a checklist in front of me be like i'm gonna get hired and i'm gonna get the next position if i do this like yeah i'm a weird programmer because i'm a programmer but i can talk to people all day i just hate doing it that's why so i'm just here. like all right yeah exactly that's why he's here talking to four people in a camera yep Oh, you fine Blair's folks! I love talking to you. Um, huh? He's here in spirit. That's good. You know, yeah, that's, uh, what uh, you don't realize is Kepley sitting around the corner. As soon as he said it, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> na, 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 na. <laughs> you just see somebody's head pop up in the corner. But um, how nine thousand? It's like you know, mounted on the wall there. My current position, I am happy with my upper management because one of them I don't inter- interact with ever, which is fine, and then the other one. I I have a good rapport with her. It's easy say, for me to handle that situation. I was gonna say I feel like your direct the person you directly report to. I feel like if that role was a robot, then the I assume person whose name starts with a B would mm-hmm. be above that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like you would still get your leadership capability. You know? Oh, I, I feel like that person would rally the troops, whereas your direct reporter maybe does rally the troops. Yeah. But at least in my positioning, there was I I didn't feel the rallying troops from that level felt from the higher level good higher good, good manager both. not really a good leader i would i would yeah. say both um but we could talk about this off, off say, camera but that, yeah, that's now getting but really even this is kind of a, this is kind of a speci- well this is a specific use case for though. me yeah. that yeah that's that's my like for me specifically i would not want to change my hierarchy and how everything works right because i know how those people work <laughs> what if some of the people on your level were replaced with robots <laughs> that may be beneficial to me <laughs> i may appreciate that entirely but 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 the people above me i know how just, that works just hope that don't any uh, none of them watch the podcast i mean <laughs> if any of them do you don't know who i'm talking about what are you gonna yeah. <laughs> he just points and says the <laughs> I'm talking about you over there in the corner. Um, so <laughs> they're not analyzing our city. <laughs> they're like, who is he pointing to? Is he pointing to this person? <laughs> but um, no, I think I, I hundred hundred percent humans are easier to handle than machines. Machines are simple and that you understand what they're going for. Right. But if you're trying to build a better life for yourself, you want to deal with people over machines. No matter how complex the situation feels, no matter how direless it feels. Direless? Tireless? Doesn't matter. Tireless. Uh, dire it feels. Yeah, I would actually completely yep. disagree with that. I think robots are way easier than people because ro- robots are binary. Like people like 
like my girlfriend, for example, when I try to figure out what she wants for dinner, it's like an act of Congress. It's like that is the hardest thing in the world to understand. Whereas like a robot, I'm like, hey, what day is, you know, the first day of fall? And it's like, hey, it's September 21st. And I was like, look at that. I but what, what if I you're wanted. trying to figure out what the robot wants to eat? It doesn't eat. Keep me plugged in. All right. <laughs> I'm at a good level here. You now have to, like, give it rations of electricity. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, uh, to some extent, I actually is kind of right, though. You know, saying, hey, Google is a lot easier than going, I, hey, insert girlfriend name here. Like, <laughs> I, I disagree. I mean, it's just about knowing the person. Like, I think that's where the key comes right, down but I'm to. Saying, like, if you went it's up still to, implicit. Yeah, but if you went up to your, uh, if you went, one, what are the odds of if you went up to your manager and were like, hey, I want a promotion, what are the odds that they know how to get you the promotion? And then B, would they be able to give you it? Like, you know, hey, if you do this, this, and this, uh, I'll promote you. That's I feel like that's not always the case. Literally what happened to me this year. I went up and said, I want this. They're like, cool, you got to do this. And I was like, all right, I got it. Yeah, well. <laughs> See, the, the other thing, too, is I feel like the uh, the drive here, you know, for, for people is different at this table. No, that, Dil- that's Dylan exactly and, my point. Uh, Dylan and I are very much on the same wavelength of trying to climb the ladder, you know, here if we can. If there's an available rung, I'm going to take it, you know. Yeah. I could care less about any of that. You enjoy where you're at. I'm yeah, happy where uh, I'm at. I old. obviously want to change what I'm doing specifically for yeah, newer technology. A specific but, field. Yeah. But I'm I'm happy in that position. Yeah, I yeah. So that's what I find interesting. I just want to be in the little uh, little looking glass point on top of a ship. You know, a little, what is that called? Crow's nest. Spyglass. I don't think it's called a, I mean, that's the piece. Yeah. Crow's nest. That's it is called nest. a crow's nest, yeah. That's where I want to be. Yeah, way up there. You realize that the captain's not. I was saying, you realize you realize the captain's at the helm, right? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you want to know how you get rid of the captain when the captain says, "What do you see?" and I say nothing. Except <laughs> you're <laughs> usually then the you're first person the to ship. go after the thirty foot no, drop. No, 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 I jump to the water. So all I got to do is clear the boat. So you're sinking the ship yeah. in the hope that you may become the captain next. Hundred yeah. percent. No, instead there's just. This no doesn't sh- seem very no, no, lost. Instead, the only the only ship he becomes captain of is a little plank of wood that's yeah, still yeah. floating out in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> then know, then the baddies like, come by and like, what are you guys like? I'm the captain. There's no ship. I'm the captain of this ship. It's I'm a piece re- of wood. Really then, glad then, that then I never cut. played Sea of Thieves with you. <laughs> Sinking <laughs> ship. And Sea of Thieves, specifically, what I did was I got to the top of the crow's nest and I crawled out. You know, good, wrong, or indifferent things, <laughs> depending on who you felt exactly. was at the helm. <laughs> <laughs> that was how the mission went. Well, I feel like for. Robot boss, there'd be a lot of testing involved. You want to make oh, sure yeah. that that robot boss is really well taken care of. Like, patch, First, maybe? like betas. Well, that was not where I thought you were I going know. Right. This is what I was fucking you up, buddy. You are. Speaking of betas, Dylan. <laughs> um, so with the never-ending, you know, that's a really good curveball. With the never-ending um, ploy that we get of betas and early accesses and the play before it comes out and the all that other stuff, um... We keep coming to the point now where, why do we even have release dates, I feel like? Ba- I like, for example, like Call of Duty, now, I have no issue with the Call of Duty beta. Because most of the time when you have betas, it is not quality. You know, it's a, you're testing stuff. At the end of the day, it's a test, right? Sometimes betas are like maybe testing the market. Sometimes they're testing the servers. Sometimes they're testing the quality control of the game, whatever the case may be. Like Destiny, for example, whenever they had their beta for Destiny 2, it was like, cool, this gives us, you know, a little dabble of the taste here, but, like, we still got a lot of questions. Because I feel like Call of Duty was like, they just laid it on the table and were like, hey, here's what it is. You like it? And then we were like, yes, we do. <laughs> and, like, we're going to change some stuff. And we're like, yes, sir. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> um, but it, it's one of those things where it's like, one, I feel like that's very necessary for them because they got a ton of user feedback. Yeah. They got a ton of data back. And that's going to help their release get more smooth. But you have seen, like, the internet at least in the the Twitter communities that I follow, because they're very heavily heavily Call of Duty and FPS related, so many of the content creators and whatnot are like, I don't want to play for three weeks. I'm just waiting now. Yeah. And it's like, while I admire you for giving us this amazing beta or whatever, you could have discontinued testing. Like, and there's other games like with Steam, you have early access. Yeah. And whatnot. So early access is basically like, hey, Ark, which still isn't released three years ago. <laughs> like, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna release a game. It's an early access. It'll come out one day. It's not out. Fortnite still in beta. Yeah, it's Pixar like art comes out. <laughs> finish the game. It, like, well, what is the point? Like, why? It, it's a convoluted, complicated situation. It's game by game. Yeah. So I, it feels like with this Call of Duty, they were actually trying to get data. Yeah. It seems that is the case. So why they're not a lot continuing testing up until then? Because in three weeks, there'll be plenty of players who will burn themselves out. Oh, I have no doubt. So why not just wait and then have everyone blow their load all at the same time? Distance makes the heart grow fonder. 
I don't disagree with you. It's just very interesting to me that, like, we keep getting in this, like, it, it just see, I feel like launches are so much less significant. Oh, well, it depends on the game, too. Because, like, when I was, when the Call of Duty scene, like, I guess was kind of, I don't want to say in its heyday, because I feel like the heyday of Call of Duty wasn't Call of Duty. It was probably actually Halo, but Call of Duty was, like, kind of like the side piece, you know? Um, the cod piece? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm here, <laughs> sir. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> but um, the uh, it was like midnight release is like such a big deal and it was yeah. like all that stuff. And I like now I know you technically went to a midnight release recently, but it's a nine p.m. release. So I I was going to say I think the changing landscape of technology has dwindled that down quite a bit because now it is easy for us to sit at home and go. Oh, it's midnight. Cool, I can play my game now because it yeah. preloaded three days earlier, yeah. and yeah. now it's ready to rock. Yeah. Um, I, again, I, I you know you you talk about Ark, you talk about um, Fortnite, and some of those instances make sense. Um, I think PUBG was in early access for a year, right? Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, it came out last December and, officially, and now it's like still kind of finding its way. Yeah. Um, honestly, it's because people are paying. Yeah, my thing though is I feel like. There's probably an equation, which is exactly why this happens, but I feel like the equation of, like, Call of Duty. If Call of Duty, A, you don't announce a release date. Just screw the launch date. You don't need it, right? Mm -hmm. Instead, you're like, hey, we're going to do a beta sometime in August. We give the beta dates. August beta. Do the beta. Hey, we're going to do another beta in two weeks. Cool. Beta in two weeks. You make a pre-order base or whatever. And then, like, two weeks later, you're like, hey, we're just going to release it. Here you go. No, that doesn't make them money. That makes them money. You yeah. gotta you gotta pay to get into the beta. So you have to pay to get into the beta, but not everyone's going to pay to get into the beta. They're gonna save up their money for that one game. Plus you have moms, grandpas, dads, everyone who's going out there and buying games for their kids. Like that solid release date isn't necessarily intended for us. It's intended for the general audience. I'll be honest, I don't think my parents or my grandparents would ever have paid attention to the release date yours just, no no you, just the fact that i'm putting it on a christmas list somewhere exactly, is enough, yeah, yeah. You know? so but they need that release date for the stores in order to stock it all that other stuff so you're going to need that release date so that you can go to gamestop and grandma can go i'm going to buy this game for jimmy well they ought to be jimmy yeah because it is eat the world I, he d- he might <laughs> he may. um so i think it's a it comes down to money they they get more money from having solid release dates uh, B, it's money because they get money from having these betas, these pre like people are pre-ordering beforehand. Uh, what was it? We Happy Few and uh, what's the other one? Uh, Hello Neighbor were both in early access on Steam and Xbox One where you had to pay for a certain amount in order to play them. They were not full games. They came out this summer. Yeah, this summer. I think it's out. Um, yeah, both of them are. And, and so granted, I, I would argue that it comes out to mixed fanfare because we have a few came out and people are like oh it's really cool it's the same game that's been for the past two years like you know same with hello neighbor like it is really cool but we've all seen it we've all played it so i think it could totally kill you uh depending on your your circumstance that's why i think call of duty is doing it right that's why i think it's so odd because like most of the time i feel like that i feel like early access tends to work financially because most companies that go early access you get money people play your game it's not a turd more people come play your game, and, and that's they're it. willing to spend more to get the early access. Yeah, exactly. And then some it. people are like, like Star Citizen, for example. Like I put an unhappy amount of money into. Mm. Just you want to you wanna do do you wanna just say how much pocket? unhappy is just uh, just to basically play a game that is you know maybe a couple years out, and and I'm totally cool playing it. I'm totally cool testing. It, I'm totally cool helping out. Like I can if I get on and like like the blackout thing. I obviously played it because I wanted to, but in the scenario that it was sucked and it was buggy and it was awful. I know most people wouldn't have played it, but I'd be like, cool, I want this game to be good, so I'm going to keep playing it, and I'm going to, hey, what do you want me to do? You want me to jump off the map or whatever? Yeah. I'll test it. Um, I definitely think Call of Duty is probably, in my opinion, the exception of a beta that like everyone's like, wow, you just tripled or quadrupled the amount of people who are going to play this game. Like, yeah. Mark had no concept of ever caring about Call of Duty, and there's a and decent then played, chance. Then I played Blackout Beta, and I was like, Okay, this is a much better version of PUBG. <laughs> yeah. I, love it. I love PUBG, so I, I'd love this. Well, and I do think that's one of the reasons why this is the exception to their rule. Because yeah. usually they do betas, but they're usually really close to launch. Yeah, they usually do. It's probably like the two weekends before or yeah. weekend before or something like that. Whereas this one seems to be a more long-tailed, we're actually getting information off of it. Yep. I'll give them credit for this one. And this is, again, specific use yeah. here. But 
I'll give them credit for this one because this is a brand new feature that they're throwing in the game, yep. that kind of thing, and they've never worked with map sizes with this many character or this many you know players on it before. So like, all right, we're gonna tweak player counts, we're gonna tweak this, yeah. we're gonna tweak that, you know, and try to make it better, you know, because what is it? They one of the things they did was increase from eighty to eighty-eight yeah, and people. That, and that's at one so time. you guys saw that in the, in the yeah, middle. and that's the totally middle. like the thing to me that like. <clears throat> Like Realm Royale. It had a purpose. It, yeah, basically. Like Realm yeah. Royale is a game in early access, and it's uh, made by high res. Me and Mark played it for a good little bit. And, and they killed granted, themselves they, with it. Until they botched it. Yeah, they talk about it's an alpha, and they're like, oh, the concept of an alpha is like test things. And like they're not testing things. They're completely changing a game. Like, yeah. Like you started here. Now you're way over there. Whereas like Call of Duty was like, hey, we're going to start this with 80 people. We're going to test, okay? And then it's like we get in, and they're like, cool, tomorrow we're going to kick it up to 88. And it wasn't great in the beginning. And they're like, Bear with us, we're figuring some stuff out, and then it was fine. Yeah. And they're like, hey, we're going to try some crazy game modes, okay? We're going to double the zone speed. Awesome. Hey, we're just going to do shotguns and pistols. Awesome. But and you could also like, pick to go back to the original to game the original mode, side. and you'd be okay. That's cool. And it was just like, I can clearly see your testing. One, no matter what you're doing right now, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and two, like, like this, like if games came out and they were early access, like in the stage that that came out with, it was amazing. Like, Battlefield, we played the week before Blackout came out. And Battlefield played fine. It played just like a Battlefield game. Mm -hmm. There were more errors in Battlefield, I think. We kept having this crash issue and yeah, a couple of things. Th the one thing I had, I guess the issue I had with EA Dice on this, or Dice in particular, this was you don't want to release a patch halfway through to say, hey, we've worked on this. Yeah. You know, kind of like you don't have a dedicated development team to fixing the beta because yeah. during yeah. the beta? Because, well, part of the problem is that, you know, yeah, it's out for a week, and, and I mean, we get two extra days or whatever it was, but... Every single time I jump in a server, it seemed like roughly the same bugs every single time. So they were actually relatively common. But the other yeah. thing, you know, you have other guys, too, and I had to say this to a couple people, too, every now and then. It's like, oh, this is, you know, it's still a beta. You know, it's still a beta. Yeah, it's buggy. It's still a beta, though. But the the issue is, is it actually deterred a lot of people, I think, from the game, too, yeah. which is kind you know, of a problem. I, I think the big issue for me for that, though, is, like, like Call of Duty seemingly showed us. Now, granted, Treyarch is seemingly the golden child of Activision right now. But it was like, act, they were basically like, the head of the studio, which is David Vonderhaar, who is an awesome dude, was basically like, hey, we're working on patches. This is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Hey. like, And it would be people were complaining about the armor from the first day. And he's like, hey, we're just going to let it play out for a day or two. We're going to look at some data, and we're going to see if this is really an issue. And then people were also complaining about a gun. Um, and then the next day, he's like, hey, we've been looking at the data. The gun's fine. We don't think it's overpowered. We just think some people are a little dramatic. Um, we're not going to change the gun. But the armor we looked into, and you know what, it is lower power. We're going to tweak that. We should be at tomorrow, no, two days from now, or whatever. Um, whereas, like, the Battlefield was just like, hey, here's, like, a 75% done game that's going to be exactly what you're playing in a month. Here you go. Yeah. yeah. And they walked away. It's like they literally just, like... like there was no more press like, release, nothing else to yeah. say. We're going to fix this in the in the full game or anything like that. I mean, maybe they, maybe they were replying on Twitter or something like that to say that, but, like... To me, it's just like if you're like a kid and somebody brings you a brand new toy and then teach you how to use it and like they're hanging out with you and you're struggling and they're like, oh, no, you do it like this, you do it like this. Or the other scenario of the EA approach is like they bring you a ball in a cup and set it on your doorstep and bring your doorbell and just walk away. And well. <laughs> sorry sorry, the string broke. You know, you have to, you have to buy the actual one and, and, and see if it works. Three months. Yeah. I, I do find this interesting because the approach that – Activision is taking and Treyarch is taking with this is abnormal. This is it not is totally abnormal. This is typically not how and betas are run in general. It's really weird to me because like like Fortnite you see changes and you see updates and whatnot. Yeah. But Fortnite it's not a beta, it's a game. It's just it, out. It, yeah. I, it, you're basically just calling it a beta because it crashes. We'll, we'll touch on that in a second. Um, but even like PUBG had, you know, update I mean, granted it it, it was a full release beta, you know, that that ran for right, however it, long. It felt very iterative though. Like it was like, hey, we're gonna release an update is coming next month or whatever. Right. Whereas, like, Call of Duty is, like, it's patching. Like, it, it feels like these are dudes that are in an office. Like, it feels like you're at work. Like, hey, this thing's not working. Let me change it. Hey, it's working. Yeah. And yeah. It, it just felt like... Well, the, to me, like, in, in, in software development anyway, you know, like, you release a beta, and then it seemed like they were actually issuing, like, nightly releases, yeah. which, in a software development world, issuing nightly releases to something to the masses like that is terrifying. God-awful. Like, you, you don't yeah. do that. But the difference is, is that if you have a team that can sustain that kind of thing, interesting to, statistic I learned today, um, software developers, you're going to enjoy this. Apparently, Amazon pushes to, pro, uh, to prod every 11.7 seconds. 
Oh, oh, that terrifies me. I peed but a they, little bit. But they have a <laughs> but they have a process in place that makes sure that all the software that they put into place, you know, is tested and everything and validated, and then it just gets pushed up to the next release. And then they have servers that just rebuild and rebuild and rebuild. Jesus. And the thing is, is that if you have the development process and you have the developers that you trust to do that, and the development teams that you trust to do that, and the right processes set up, you can do that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean it, it's not like it's an unfeasible thing, but uh, I mean. I, it's just a little terrifying to think about too that they're just sort of like, well, we're going to tweak this, we're going to throw that in, but they're minor changes too. So, well, yeah. I mean, your point is, and it's it's true, is that it's abnormal, like, yeah. and, and and this is this should be the gold standard going forward. Hundred percent. Oh yeah, yeah. And that that to me is what's so interesting. Like we've seen, like Call of Duty has always been very good in the past. So they release an update every Tuesday. That's what they always do. Yeah. Whether it's a gun balance or whatever. And that's all the Call of Duty games, not just Treyarch games. Um, and, and a lot of games do that, but like. It's just very odd because, like, this is the first time I've played a beta, and I've, at the end of the beta, been like, A, that was a beta, and B, that's how every beta should be. Yeah. Like, I honestly, like, we gave feedback, they listened, they changed things, we gave more feedback, they changed more things, and now we assume the end goal is going to be better. It, it's a really difficult thing to juggle because we, we were talking about early access, and I think early access was a label that was utilized specifically for what you know PUBG was using it for originally, which was we need funding, we need to get the game out there for people to test a little bit, plus get some cash flow so we can keep building. That is no longer the case for a majority of games that go early access. Totally. Most of the time, I mean, high res with Realm Royale is a great example. It's not a really a beta. They were just like, we want to get in on this cash cow. Here's a, a quick excuse so that if we throw something up and it breaks people now yep. but they're still going to pay for it and we have something running and we never have to release it because it's always in beta the fact that PUBG actually released i'm pretty sure is only because it was on xbox and they're like you eventually have to do something well, with this. Yep. the other thing too is they eventually got bought out too which is yeah, yeah you know which is where the, the you know the bigger companies like no no, no you, you need to come up with a 1.0 here yeah but um this type of thing i think I think it would be interesting to see what happens next year, uh, both with Call of Duty and outside of it, because there are so many games that do release like early access beta. Like Division has a pre order right now. Where it's like you could play the game three days early. Not the same thing, but right. Like there's see, all these. Actually, that's always been the traditional definition of early access to me. Is yeah, you buy it and you play it a couple days early. And not. so there's this weird disconnect in which <clears throat> there are studio heads. Or, or marketing. I don't even want to incorporate the actual developers that are stating like, hey, you can be in on this beta, but they're not real betas. But, they're well, early no, access. There's no standardization to the terms. That You're using. right. You're right. And there's not going to be. I'm not necessarily asking for that. I'm asking for more of a, a social norm within the industry of, hey, what? what Call of Duty did, what Activision and Treyarch did this time around, that's how we should be running this. Yeah, to me, it's, it's very but interesting yeah, because like you have like – you have the bla the the battlefield one. You have like Destiny. You have like FIFA and NHL and like all these like other games. Like their air quote betas are at best to me server capacity testing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like that is just the the only bit of thing I feel like maybe gets tweaked. It's fair testing too. Like that is one hundred percent something you and should I, test for. Yeah, and I don't disagree that that's not something that needs to be tested. But like at the end of the day, like. You should label that as, hey, we're testing server capacity. Yeah. Hey, we're testing bandwidth. Hey, we're testing throughput. It's, it's technically a beta, but not put really a, a Put beta. a public blog that's, like, even up on the front screen when you first load the because game. Like, hey, this is what we're working on right yeah, now. Yeah. Like, to me, like, it, it's not going to change. Like, like we would have still got on Battlefield if they said, hey, we're just testing server capacity. Or, hey, we're oh, just yeah. testing, yeah. like, service stability or whatever. Like, we would still get on and try it. And it was like, oh, this sucks. We'll, we'll still hang out or whatever. And then your fans are still going to do that. But, like, when that's all that you're changing, you're not – why do you release a week long beta? Like what yeah. did Battlefield what did Battlefield learn in the after the first twelve hours? But see, I don't think that the policy was for them to really lo I mean, don't get me wrong, they still publicly said, Hey, if there are bugs, publish them yeah. here. But the issue too is you can't even get bug reports on the bugs that you try to fix if you don't just continuously release patches. Yeah. D different yeah. note, but <clears throat> I, I don't know. It's the whole Set it and forget it thing that, that bothers yeah. me, I guess. It's just very interesting to me because it's like, I guess we've never been shown the light before. <laughs> it's just very odd of like seeing like, I, I guess when I played, like there was a game like way back in the day, like I think it's PlayStation 3 called Starhawk. Yeah. And they had, a, they had early access and beta testing for a while. And it was like, one, not that many people did it. It was probably like maybe a couple hundred people did it total. But it was you were playing with the developers and in chat with the developers and they're like, yeah, that tower doesn't work yet, but 
we're going to have it up in like the next day or two. And you're like, that's cool. You're like, yeah, we're debating on if we're going to do this or that. And then everybody's like, oh, that's a cool idea. And you're like, okay, we'll do that one then. And you're like, well, and even that's more, awesome. Yeah. Even more obscure games, you wouldn't think about it. Little Big Planet 2, 3, and the Vita version. And that put forth fingers for some reason. <laughs> uh, all had beta testing for their online capabilities, where it was like, "Hey, Media Molecule is going to put up a bunch of just randomly created levels that they have created in studio. You're going to test out all the server capabilities, see if things crash, see if you can create and post." And they had month long, like it was, you had to be invited to it. Yeah. Uh, they did all like these the people who basically got famous creating stuff, and they're like, "Hey, you know, you come in, break it, and we do bug reports that to way." Me, that is where like the difference in a closed beta and open beta should be. Like, if it's going to be an open beta, you should be, in my opinion, like Call of Duty and able to handle massive amount of people giving you massive amount of information and be changing things. Yeah. In an open source of like, hey, if you're going to invite, like, I don't know, maybe we'll just make up numbers, but we'll say a million people play the Call of Duty Blackout beta, and if a million people played it, like, they at least got one or two patches, and no matter if they played it for one day or whatever. So it's like, you get this information, you change it, and you fix it. So, like, that, to me, is, like, what an open beta should be. If it's a closed beta, Little Big Planet, cool. Yeah. Hey, we're just testing servers. We just need, like, a 1,000 people, and we're going to hit, like, five servers. Cool. Yeah. Like, Battlefield could have done the same thing. Of like, hey, these are 75-man groups. These are 100-man lobbies. We just need 500 people this Tuesday at 4 p.m. People are still going to come. It's not like yeah. people aren't going to be there. Yeah, no, they're, you're going to have diehards for the games. They're going to be like, yeah, absolutely, I'll be there. You know. And what's like, worse yeah. is like if you're in a marketing department here, like that builds nothing but hype. If only like 500 people get to play Battlefield, and any of them record it, everyone on YouTube is gonna be like, oh yeah, this looks really good. Yeah. So you, it's basically like Call of Duty just rolled the dice and got Yahtzee, whereas like everyone else, I feels like it's like 90 percent of the time you're gonna get Snake Eyes, and everyone's like, nah, we'll keep doing it. See, I don't, I don't think it's just them rolling the dice though, because like you guys said, they were actively working on it. This wasn't just a stroke of luck. Oh, this yeah, was one hundred percent them putting totally the effort. Definitely a, a good process, a, yeah. a good idea from somebody in the development team or somebody in the project management team yep. that says, "Let's do live releases. Let's yep. do live tweaks. Let's do live fixes because we want to get this right." You both better be tweeting, Snapchatting, whatever you can, it's clamoring to yeah. the rooftops and getting everyone else who enjoyed this to do so, so yeah. they can hear it. It's really impressive to, to me though. Praise, if, praise Treyarch and tag in like Dragon Dice, yeah. tag in yeah. even yeah. Uh, like the rest of the Call of Duty developers, you know, like yeah. Call of Duty Studios. Why it's crazy not? to me mainly because of like, like it, when they change from 80 to 88, like legit, the first like four or five hours of it like is pretty cancerous. Like you couldn't say in matches very well because like the servers got laggy. Yeah. Like they couldn't handle it. And it was like everyone playing was like, oh man, this kind of sucks. Like, but they're testing it. I kind of get it. And then, like, when the head of the the head of the studio is just like, "Yeah, hey, we're fixing a patch. It'll be out at two. And then, like, the patch comes out at two, and it's like a little better. And we're like, "Oh, wow, this is pretty. This is this is better. This is noticeably better." <laughs> and it's like, "Yeah, we got another patch coming out at six. It'll fix it." And we're like, "Wow, this is wow. That's impressive. <laughs> it's smart from a studio yeah. standpoint too, because I I mean, a lot of companies." outsource QA. Some of them have their own QA teams and there's a ton of it that goes into it through the development process for sure. Yeah. But I mean, when you're talking about getting a large group of people who are all online at the same time from different locations across the United States or globally and interacting with systems in ways that you cannot fathom, then yep. this is brilliant. Well, that's yeah, one exactly. of the things there was an interview with uh, David von der and he was basically talking about how like they'd been testing in their studio for a good while, right? It's been behind closed doors. They hadn't really shown anything. So it was like, yeah, the issue is, like, we don't have that many people. So we'd have to, like, take, like, 90% of our office to go play one round. <laughs> so then you have, like, developers who are like, oh, I died. Oh, i got to wait 15 minutes to be able to play again. I can't really go code anymore, so I'm just going to kind of sit here and wait. So it's like, we would legit waste hours just getting four or five games in. Yeah. Because we had to take our whole team and be like, hey, guys, we got to test 100 people. <laughs> uh, let's see how this works. And then they're like, throughout the interview, they're asking them stuff. They're like, yeah, so what if this happens? And he's like, I don't know. We we didn't test that. Yeah, I'm like, we'll then, find out. Yeah, and he's just like, we'll find out. And they're like, well, can you tie? And he's like, well, it never really happened. So I, <laughs> I don't know what would happen if that happened. And then oddly enough, like a streamer was like streaming, and uh, they like they basically both died simultaneously to a vehicle, and it in a weird way kind of like respawned both of them, but it just said tie. And he was just like, he then tweets a photo and was like. Yes, you can tie. <laughs> Lol, looking into it. <laughs> and it's like that's amazing. That's awesome. No, it's a really cool process. I like this. Um, I unfortunately, I think you were trying to bring it up earlier, but we were talking over you is that there isn't a real solution to this because beta is an, a, a, 
a very amorphous, ubiquitous term across the industry. Yep. It can literally mean you could test a feature and be like, yeah, it's in beta. Like, or There's, better yet, it could be you know a full one, a version 2.0 game, but you're just classifying it to 0.8. You know, correct. Like, yeah, uh, like it, it's or it could be a beta fish. But I do think that if people like you two who are enamored by this system, if you if people are talking to to Treyarch and they're talking to Activision and other studios like you're saying like Tagnamo, like this is how you do a beta, they do listen. Uh, you know, they will take this into so, account. I guess my my thought here has been like the difference between like a beta and alpha to me has been like one game looks crappier. It's like, oh, you haven't finished your graphics. Or, hey, you haven't finished a certain part of it. Like, It's usually, to me, like an alpha, if I were to guess, like there's a large fundamental part of your game that's still missing. So, yeah, an alpha, from my understanding and from what I've worked, a little bit of games I've worked on, is the bare bones mechanics are there. Yeah. Things break yeah. consistently. And, like, you don't have, you may not have, like, a full map or you yeah. may not, you, you're Maybe rendering it's only a section or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But to me, like, if you want to do, like, if for example, like, say we're, if we're going to make a fighting game, right? And if you wanted to do an alpha or a beta, like, if you want to do an alpha, then you should be like, hey, we're testing whether we want to have melee weapons or projectile weapons. Like, this is, like, a fundamental, like, game option, mechanic right? Or issue mechanic here, yeah. or something, right? Then once you get to the beta, you're like, hey, we got a sword and katana and some ninja stars. We think ninja stars might be broken, but maybe you guys are better than us. Let us know. Yeah. Oh, they're broken. Let me fix it real quick. How do you like them now? And it's like, that to me is like, that makes sense of like what a beta is. Or, or it could be server testing. I have no issue with that, but just be transparent. Just be yeah. like, hey, like don't be destiny. Be like, hey, we're doing a beta. It's like, no, you're just letting us play a level eight. Yep. That's what you're doing. You're basically just letting us play for three hours. Well, especially when these studios are like, and in order to give an even playing field, we're going to wipe all of your data. Yeah. Well, at least like, <laughs> you're like, wait, what? The best part was like everyone's complaining because like Blackout is wiping all the data, or whatever. Yeah. And they were like, we haven't built a database. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, all right, that's a good reason. Yeah. <laughs> that's valid. So, I guess we'll never know. Treyarch, after world. But so uh, yeah, give your shout out now, David Vanderhaar. Give your shout out. Rule the world. Shout out to, to Treyarch and Activision out. for what they oh. did. Yeah, yeah, Treyarch. Good shit. Everyone tweet, hashtag, great beta. At Dice. <laughs> Take some notes. Learn. Oh, like, oh, I'm, oh, I'm, a battle fire. I'm a Battlefield fan here, and I'm going to tell you to take notes from Call of Duty. Ooh. That hurts the inside, doesn't it? You, wouldn't have said, you couldn't have dreamed saying that six months ago. I couldn't have dreamed saying that three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a strange world we live in in general because, all about strange today. you know, we, we have lots of... Of, of different pieces of technology in which you don't expect changes to come like they do these days. Um, like we have music that gets patched or updated. What was that? Kanye's or Wait, what? Yeah. yeah. Who's that? Who, someone uh, released an album recently yeah. where they added more to it in a, in a patch. We have television shows where they just like censor stuff randomly. You know, or in, in, music, in, in most music terms, yeah. it's called a remix or, you know, a, yeah. a no, 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 part it, two. It was like there were, ele- it wasn't Kanye, I think it was Kid Cudi or somebody. But it was like there were 11 tracks on the CD and then Spotify just refreshed and it was 13. And he was just like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but but That's not sketchy at all. Like yeah, what? D- DC did the, the number one maneuver I didn't think I'd see in my lifetime this week when they patched a comic book. Batman yeah. Damned was released. Uh, how, does it, how does that even happen? Batman Damned is a graphic novel involving the Dark Knight and Constantine. And in the comic, Bruce Wayne goes full frontal nudity. Now, this is not like... Was that, was that all the reports clear? I saw about you know, Batman's junk? The, the, the Batwang? Um, yeah, because it. there's like some shadowing and stuff, but... Best up, name for it is the Batterdang. The, no, batter, the, batter, yeah, the Batterdang. Yeah, that's a good one. The, the internet erupted and yeah. joy and fury and everything you can expect and dc cowered and decided they're going to patch the electronic version of the uh of the novel and take it out but you just gave yourself the best publicity ever i don't disagree and so ever. here lies an interesting question which i think we've talked about before but i wanted to talk outside of games because games always like day one patches are a thing now yeah. going gold doesn't matter worth it for games irrelevant so patching other forms of media and your thoughts and feelings towards this because in my opinion i don't care if you dislike or like the wang the artist put it in there it has come out 
if you disagree with it, just move to the next page. This was very much a mature book. This isn't like some yeah, yeah. kids Batman <laughs> that they put this in there. Right. Like this was designed for adults, and it just blew to me, me away. It, it's so fascinating because like Giggity. the I guess we're in a time now <coughs> to where like they're That's like so patching subtle. is really irrelevant, right? Yeah, because no matter what, like even if they pulled all the comics and reprinted more or whatever, like. One, you would have just made the single most valuable modern day comic. I should have fucking bought a comic. Yeah, dude. Well, no, so I don't think I don't think all the reprints, it. all the reprints, every print that goes out from like after this one will not have the wang. That's amazing. We should look into this. Episode, yeah, which, <laughs> which means they're all going to be extremely expensive already. Yeah, probably. Um, it's just very fascinating to me because in the old days, um, like the Han shot first thing, like that's a legit debate, and then until people, I guess by whatever means had recorded it back in the day or whatever or I don't remember if it was somebody had recorded it back in the day like Gorilla style in a theater Mm -hmm. or if some executive said that they patched it but that they patched the Han shooting first thing in the Disney master copy oh really yeah Oh. so it was apparently in the original version Han did shoot first but then Disney thought that was too aggressive, so then they changed it. So, so technically, Han shoots. Second. It actually wasn't Disney; it was George Lucas. Okay. It was during the the re-release on DVD in the nineties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Versions or he, we went from VHS to not. Yeah, because he he hated the fact that Han would seem so ruthless, and so he wanted to change it. Because by the time that they were releasing those films, he had kind of grown into this noble, thieving character. But the whole core purpose was that he was kind of an ruthless. asshole; like yeah. he would protect himself. Yeah. Um, I just find it very fascinating. My dad actually, um, uh, he has a weird piece of collectible. Uh, I don't, I don't. Knowing your father, I'm curious where this is going. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's art. I don't think it's art. What, what, what was that? Eighty-two dollars. That's not terrible. Used right now. That's not terrible. That's, it's gonna go higher. I, I... It probably will. Um, but my father has a paint, uh, a a poster. Okay, so in NASCAR. There is a race. It's like it's like the All Star race. It used to be called the Winston, um, and all the players that were invited to the all the drivers that were invited to the All Star race used to do this like lined up photo, right? And I don't remember the guy's name. I think it was something Richmond. I don't remember his first name. Um, either way, he was a uh, notoriously exuberant. He was notoriously uh, a ladies' man. He, I believe, ended up perishing from AIDS, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but um, in this uh, Winston photo, while no one was noticing, he decided to unzip his pants and drop a little a little meat hammer on somebody's shoulder. Oh, no, I do remember that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, no, and nobody and noticed so it. So nobody yeah. notices it. So Winston cuts this, ships it. And they ship like, I want to say it's like the first 10,000 or 100,000 of the posters. That's amazing. Yeah, and and then once they ship it, everyone's like, there's a dude – Wang on ah. this poster, and then like NASCAR, and like everyone's like, "Oh my god, we gotta pull it, we gotta pull it." So then they tried to like pull back all the ones that were shipped out. They reprinted it. Um, they like, I guess, crappily photoshopped it out back then. Um, but my dad has like one of the original prints of it or whatever. And it's one of those <laughs> things where it's like that version of patching to me is like back in the day, like you could get away with stuff like that. Yeah. Whereas like now, if that happened, like that used to be when my dad's friends that really like NASCAR would come over, they'd be like, "That's not real," and he'd be like, "Look at it." It's real. And then everyone's like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> Whereas like now you just be like, let me Google this. That's Photoshop. It, it is it is unfortunate because I do feel like you you miss out on those kinds of circumstances and yeah. those stories. <laughs> and, and quite honestly, like I out of principle, I want the bat dick. Like yeah. I just give me the comic with it. So I I understand offering options, but I really hate that this is like if you buy this book digitally, this is it. This is the version that DC has given you. And they they own the property. It is their right. They're allowed to do what they want. They, but they vetted this. Like, they have yeah. a system set in place for that artist and that writer. It's not like this was – this wasn't that circumstance. Like, yeah. DC went through and was like, no, everything's cool. And then the public came out and some people didn't like it. And they're like, oh, should we probably should move it. No. Well, it's weird no, to but, but you actually crush on your own core values there by pulling it back. I agree 100%. Yeah. I remember it was such a huge deal in the uh, the killing joke, which is like the only real. Yeah. There's been so much hubbub recently about, what's the guy's name? The uh, new Joker guy? Oh, jo- yeah, yeah, yeah. Joaquin Phoenix? Yeah, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix. Um, <laughs> it's supposed to. <laughs> it's supposed to. <laughs> it works. <laughs> I don't think that's possible. <laughs> he just murdered it twice. <laughs> um, it's 
it's uh, supposed to be, I guess, a bat or a Joker origin to an extent. Yeah, a more realistic take based off of a couple of old like '80s and '90s films. You get to see him without his uh, mock up, without his mock up. Um, but everyone keeps talking about the Killing Joke because it's like the only really Joker, you know, behind the scenes that we got. Um, I just, go I all I want to say is the killing. The whole point of the Killing Joke is that it's not a definitive origin. Like yep. he even says at the very end, like if I had to pick, I would just do multiple choice. Like t- stop yeah. taking that to heart. Um, Anyways, which is fascinating to me. But it, I remember when that comic came out because I was in high school and, like I said, my uncle's a huge comic book nerd. Yeah, but like him and like his circle or whatever, it was such a huge deal that the Joker shot Barbara Gordon. Yeah, like that was mm-hmm. a huge deal. And it I still just think, is today for a lot I, of people. And I just think about like how like. Back then, DC had be like, nah, it's cool. Yeah. Whatever. Whereas, like, if that same scenario happens today and then the public just is like, no, nah, that's wrong. Like, this should never happen, yada, yada. I feel like there's a chance where they could be like, it's, uh. They already, uh, they already had this scenario come up because of this history. Um, there was a. Are you talking about the, the Robin went left and the Batman and the Catwoman? Nope. Okay. 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 Got him. Um, no, there was a, a storyline in the comics recently. <laughs> In which, um, what was it? It was called Death of the Family. And in which the Joker comes back and tries to take on the Bat Family. And one of the original covers had the Joker dressed in that same shirt that he wears when he shoots Barbara Gordon. It's like a Hawaiian shirt. It's floral. Um, Standing behind her with his uh, finger gun like up to her temple. And she's got a Joker smile. And she looks terrified on it. And people flipped. Great. The, like the history and context like yeah, yeah. it the joker's a terrible character and so for me i was like well that's that's his character you don't like it <laughs> it is what it is yeah. but i also understood why people are like we shouldn't put that on the cover i'm like okay i i All understand cover, dog. exactly where, where i think it ended up but All people right. like flipped and so dc pulled it and i think that's my biggest thing is like you're so afraid of controversy but you generate art like this yeah, is, is art my thing is like like just like what you said with the killing uh the killing joke one the joker himself says it at the end he's like i would if i had to give it to myself i'd give it a multiple choice question or a multiple choice answer um this is not this new joker movie is not going to be the same as the uh jack nicholas joker yep it's not going to be the same as jared leto or the heath ledger or any of these guys like yeah these are all artist renditions of their opinion of what they think like whereas like at least with Marvel or at least at least with um Disney and Star Wars like you have a canon universe that you want to keep like yeah. you know we're going to make this make sense. They could easily be like hey we're going to make this other stuff and it can be whatever. Whereas like there's never been a time when DC is like this is actually the Batman story. They're like yeah. This is Batman. It's cool. Yeah. What do you think about it? I mean, e- even now they have two core comics that are kind of on the same timeline, but sometimes they're not. Yeah, and it's, it's like, fine. And it's just like you, you pick and choose what you like. Like, for example, like the Arrow, like the TV show, like people who watched that or read that beforehand, like you like the Golden Age version or you like the Bronze Age. Like, which, which Arrow did you like? Yeah. More? People are going to tell you if they read the comics because they choose one. Yeah. You know? And that's like part of the greatness of it. Like, if you think that like the Joker is too ruthless, there, that's not going to be your favorite Joker. Yeah. Okay. That, that's fine. You want the weird dark metal one? Yeah. You can choose that guy. It, it it's it's amazing to me because DC is a they're on this push right now where they're like we want to do a mature line. It's the Black Label is their publishing like narrative for it. I do think that the, it is a huge missed opportunity for this Black Label uh, publishing line. Is the Black Label pu- publishing line on the front of every cover? It should black sensor bar or something <laughs> that'd, be that'd be perfect Just, yeah yeah but um they they're they're like pushing for these stories scott snyder one of my favorite batman writers of all time is doing a story it's post-apocalyptic gotham with the joker's head in a jar and batman's on a fucking bike and he's trying to figure out how he got there like that sounds amazing wow. that sounds worse than batman's dick being on a page to me <laughs> like the joker headless talking in a, the back of it like the interesting thing to me about th- just this whole Batter, batter wang, batter wang, batter wang, batter wang thing. The Wayne Wang. I feel like there's an artist somewhere that's like, you realize you made me color in and draw a penis, a penis <laughs> on this guy, and we are not gonna even release the rest of them. <laughs> I, what's weird to me is like just the I don't know exactly how that specific panel was created, but normally like the panels are created in like 
three parts, right? You have like the the writer yeah. who's like, "Hey, I want to show a bad dick," and there's, yeah. and there's like and you know the like some concept art. Yeah. He's yeah. like, "Hey, what do you think of the bad dick?" And yeah, then there's yeah, the, the third guy who's like, the hey, I need to "Color this yeah. bad dick." All no, but then there's at least fifty people in a room that are looking at it like, "Yeah, that's okay." Yeah, and then there's got to be in this scenario a fourth one to do it digitally. Yeah, yeah. I think my favorite part had to have been though where the internet was divided and they're mad about it for two different reasons. Some people were like, nah, Bruce Wayne's dick's bigger than that. And yeah, other yeah. people were just like, why is there a dick here? So. That was my favorite part of it. It's just seeing like the the people on the internet being like, honestly, somewhat unimpressed yeah. by the batter <laughs> dick. And you're like, <laughs> what were you expecting? Yeah. Like, I mean, he's a flaccid he, dude. Just walking he's around. A, he's a normal dude. Yeah. Do, what, what is this? But it, it, it's one of those, like, I mean, we talk about it all the time. Like, oh, you're on the edge of, like, going too far here. Mm-hmm. And I do feel in, like I should emphasize again. I understand they're an independent company. They're allowed to do what they yeah. want. It's just like when people complain about Twitter. I'm like, get the f- off Twitter if you don't like what they, <laughs> you don't like how they operate. Just yeah. don't use them. But I don't agree with the fact that they decided Agreed. they were going to step away. Like the, the, to me, this shows that they're a little bit more hollow. Yeah, uh, yeah. It it really does they're, sting. They're too busy focused on what everybody else wants and everybody else thinks of them to care about themselves and, and what they believe in themselves. And there are far worse things to worry about. Like comic book artists and writers get. All kinds of hate my, mail and death yeah, threats my for thing is like how is, like story arcs. How is that the one that you like you super folded on? Yeah. Because yeah. My, what I was trying to say earlier is there was a line and I think it was probably like two years ago now, where it's Batman and Catwoman. Catwoman is dating Robin at this time or married, I'm not certain which. I don't know. And Robin leaves and then Batman bangs her, gets her pregnant, and you're just like, That's way worse. <laughs> It's a I mean, weird scenario. I mean, I mean, in the 80s, they had... Uh, this just turned into a soap opera. Yeah. <laughs> they had uh, Red Arrow on heroin. Like, yeah. like they're, they've, they have had a history of being the more mature-themed comic book line. And this falls right in tow with those standards. And then they crumbled like a house of cards. Yeah. It was just very... What would be more amazing? This show, crumbled this crumbled show, like house of cards. Yeah, this show brought to you by House of Cards on Netflix. What would be no more time. amazing is if in the next panel or the next graphic novel he has, he was going to showcase the Joker and he's just packing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I think I think on like the age of streaming where I don't watch any sort of live television. I watch it all through streaming services. So if there were a patch to come in, I would miss entirely whatever circumstance I happened. remember kind of on this notion, I remember because uh, my family watches Super Bowl every year with like my parents' friends, whatever, they would, who would like, go to a party or have a party or whatever. And I remember the nip slip of uh, Janet Jackson. And I remember like we were all watching, and it was like a couple people were like, I think her titty fell out. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yep. Weird. And then we all get home, we're like, oh, man, well, they weren't crazy. Yeah, no, I remember sitting in the living room, because we actually watched it live at that point, and like, there's like eight of us standing in the living room, we're like, did I just see what I thought I saw? You know, I mean, but then you start to go back and re- like rewatch all the other stuff. And I mean, of course, it's on live television. Yeah. They've got to censor that out. But it's yeah. not—it's not even like they went in there and blurred out that specific thing and then continued to play the rest of it. No, no, no. They just cut to commercial like early. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy, yeah. Uh, I was working during that as a busboy, so I missed the entire thing. Mm. Did you but, not have a TV in the place we were busboying? I mean, yeah, but I was working as a busboy. <laughs> so <you're a> <laughs> so it wasn't like, like I was watching. Yeah, you know me in that love of sports. I was really watching the game. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. No, it just it has me concerned because I've thought a lot, especially as life goes on, like I'm looking to buy a house. I kind of want to consolidate. I have Try to two, patch life. <laughs> I have two bookshelves full of books that I adore. I love the smell of books. But I've thought about buying newer books uh, electronically because it's easier. Yeah. But this kind of thing really turns me off from doing so. Like I understand I'm going to – create you know waste in my house eventually but i'd much rather do that and get the full brunt of what the artist is trying to establish than my uncle has a study that's probably larger than this little loft area Mm -hmm. that's full of books and comics he also has huge sleeves of all the stuff he collects like in these giant cases or whatever but this is pretty much books and it's like every time we meet up or whatever i'll be like i'll bring a couple books for him to read and he'll bring a couple books for me to read and like every time i do his wife is just like dylan no he, he can have no more books. <laughs> we are at capacity. Yeah, I, I think it's the one thing that Bree and I are on the same page where we want a library. Like, we just yeah. want to get a room that's bookshelves all around and fill it. So, oh. I, I definitely, my issue with the digitizing uh, comics, I have definitely, like, just fell in victim to it. Like, comicsology is so convenient. Yeah. And it's, if it's something important, I will buy it, like, IRL. Um, like, 
the like Superman American Alien. Like mm-hmm. I, that I'm going to have yeah. in real life. Like special alliance when not I'm going to actually get physical. Um, but for the most part, like comicsology, it's just so easy. And it's also like the worst thing to do ever if you don't want to spend a lot of money on comics. Because you're just like, I'll read the first one. Or with this uh, comicsology oh, unlimited, yeah, yeah. they'll give you like the first one you read it and be like, I should buy a series. I'll read it. So they get me with sales. That's yeah. where they get. So I have the newest run of Doctor Strange. I think I have the five vi- uh, volumes that are out right now yep. because they're like, hey, this is on sale for three bucks. I was like, yeah. Three dollars. That's, that. That's not bad. That's not bad. Like five hundred pages. <laughs> but I guess I guess we kind of land on shame on you, DC. Stick to your guns. No we, shame on the artist. It should have been like the batter. They can, man cannon. They. <laughs> I th- I mean I think it was fine. It was uh, a, yeah, it was a good dick. Like, please tell me we're actually having a conversation about junk size here. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I don't say. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean it. It's well, fine. If that's the case, just <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's totally fine. It's one of those things where it's like when I saw it, I was just like. Okay. Yeah. And then I saw the internet was like, that's a little lackluster for old Bruce. I'm like, what do you want from him? <laughs> <laughs> he's doing <laughs> his knock fucking you out? best. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Maybe he's a grower. Have, have, I, you have not. Have you ever seen the movie Boogie Nights? Yes. I don't even know what so that is. I just watched it last night. And so we're talking about this, and all I can think of is the final scene of Boogie Nights, and then Bruce Wayne. I'm like, oh man, I guess I guess a little bit more of been fine. <laughs> I'm guessing there's a peen in there. There's a big old peen. Oh, in it's there. it's just. It, I mean, I'm oh. like Kenya. You go from like here down. And I'm it's not just, gonna. Okay, yeah. It's just. <laughs> I'll say it off off straight screen. up. Yeah, like, it's like flaccid. It, <laughs> yeah, like, 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 like he, he is a he shower. Is lightheaded. He yeah. is straight up a shower, not a grower. Oh yeah. man, like he gets lightheaded when he gets excited. Yeah, he sees a girl walking by, might faint. Yes. He is. Uh, he's losing a lot of blood. I mean, it's, I it's, told Marky it's Mark. Either, it's either he's going to fall forward from fainting or he's going to fall forward from the weight of it. One or the other. Is this an old movie? 97. Uh, yeah. Burt Reynolds and Mark Wahlberg. That is five years younger than me. Yeah. That kind of blew my mind a little bit. <laughs> I was born in 89, so. But an item, eight an item. I believe this is the end of the show. So this has been Strange Conversations. Where we get weird. Where we get I was weird. Uh, each yeah. and every week, we gather to give you the important things along with our topics. Uh, we'll be back again next week. Please don't forget to check out the rest of the Strange Gaming Network alongside uh, previous episodes we have. Do you, either of you have anything you want to pimp? My ride. I mean, you don't. You're not working on anything. You you were you were working on a new show. Yeah, I'm still tinkering with that. Uh, I'm hopefully going to release something in the next couple of weeks, but uh, just you know, testing. Okay. No, I'm just Test doing forever. more. Uh, we're uh, playing. You well, playing video games. Well, playing video games, and I'm doing some development stuff yeah. on uh, the thing. And I don't know if you want to. The yeah. mobile application. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Mobile application and a website and whatnot. So uh, we'll plug that whenever time is right for that. That's right. Cool, cool. I'm getting back into some game development, so I might have hey. some updates to share with people here. We'll see. But until next time. <laughs>